Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the ninth final and decisive round of the World Senior Team Championship. Well, today we will find out who will be crowned a World Senior Champion, which team will win the medals, all three, not just the gold. Um, we have actually uh, pairings which are, uh, I think, putting some some uh, pressure on the favorites because you know in, in small tournaments with not so many participants like this one for example what we had was this development when the favorites started playing each other early and they finished basically playing each other and now in the last ninth round when the, um, we need to have uh, uh, the decision who will win we have actually favorites playing outsiders more or less so on board one for example we have poland against usa italy faces montenegro england one faces the women chinese team china shenzhen women 50 and iceland plays england too so these four teams uh, which are the first two usa and italy tied for first and um, england and iceland tied for third are all expected to win their matches which means that they will continue to be tied for first and third and then what we will have is uh, and at least this is what i expect to have tie breaks decide the winners and uh, who will be the uh, uh, the winner of the bronze medal and who will be left outside of the medals and finish fourth I think the, the current uh, tie-break uh, situation doesn't matter that much because a lot can change in the last round. Uh, unfortunately, I have been a victim of these changes for too many times that I care to remember in my uh, own career when uh, last round changes have robbed me of a lot of money, <laughs> let's put it like this, in Swiss event events. So, uh, okay, uh, we, we will see what, uh, what, how things will stand when the match is finished. So, uh, let's start uh, with the games in the S50 section. So, on board one for Poland and USA, we have Gdansky against Shabalov. Here we have the time on the board, D4, C5, Knight F3, Knight C6, Knight C3. This move order was is generally used to avoid the Sveshnikov variation, but as we see, Shabalov did not intend to play the Sveshnikov, so e6 was played, d4, cd, knight e4, and queen c7, the time manov. And now Gdansky is thinking already for something like four minutes, maybe a bit more, thinking what which line to choose, or well, if if he prepared for this, then he's probably uh, trying to remember or refresh. His preparation and if he has been surprised then he's probably thinking what line to choose okay bishop e3 played i don't think he should have been surprised at least unless this is the first time in his life that Chabalov plays a time out of time out, okay a6 the usual move it's a uh, at least normally to very sharp play a time on variation though depending on the line uh, white chooses here black also has options of transposing to shevening and uh, after some knight f6 d6 and so on this is usually mm, applicable when uh, white plays the system with the bishop e2 now for example in the other lines the transposition to the shevening is probably not the most precise reaction and usually time on of players prefer other reactions we will see what white can what white will play here many of op many options lately the move queen f3 has received a lot of attention uh, in a way uh, replacing the english attack with queen d2 in popularity and the old lines for example at bishop d3 which i also used to play a lot uh, in the 90s especially the classical system with bishop e2 nothing wrong with it there is also the move a3 um, uh, for example, this was played by Tal in the 60s. Uh, 
so a lot of options for for white here we will see what he goes for let's go to board two we have kaidanov against sapis and we have the chebanenko slav uh, a familiar opening for me i have played it in the past but perhaps more importantly i have written a, a course on it for chessable and uh, I, which means that i had to uh, analyze it very deeply and here after e3 for example black played b5 but uh, for my for my course i actually recommended the move bishop f5 and the reason for this is that when i analyze the lines with b5 b3 bishop g4 i discovered that they are not as solid as they appeared or at least they looked like when the chebanenko started to become popular in the uh, 90s so i wasn't too happy with this that's why I went for the I, what I think is the more solid move Bishop f5 yet here white plays the move a4 and this is not what I normally looked at I think I looked at the let's say more uh, direct lines here for white which again I, I say that didn't quite like but okay a4 I guess is possible so um, it's a normal move so we'll see how black reacts. Board 3, Sielitsky against Novikov, we have the London system, d4, d5, knight f, bishop f4, knight f6, e3, c5, c3, knight c6, knight d2, and queen b6. No standard moves. Now, queen b3 is the usual reaction to the attack on the pawn on b2. One black can go c4, then queen c2, and so on. Okay, white is thinking. There's a huge difference in, in strength, especially on both three and four. So, for example, Sielitsky is rated 19.56 against Novikov's 25.13. That's more than 500 point difference. And on board four, which we can look, Yermolinsky is rated 24.19 against 19.48. So that's over 400 point rating difference so i expect the americans to win on these two boards and then just basically uh, wrap up the match with those two wins um, on board four we have the benko gambit played by fleece against yermolinsky even though the move order is a bit strange i think d4 c5 d5 knight f6 and now uh, curiously yermolinsky went for c4 this particular move order is not considered too great for black because white can actually go knight c3 instead of c4 and then continue with e4 so this gives him faster development uh, does not close the b1 uh, f1 a6 diagonal so it allows for this bishop b5 check an annoying check for example after g6 let's say e4 d6 and some check knight f3 let's say bishop g7 and bishop b5 is an annoying check and the third thing about knight c3 is that the c4 square is vacant which can be used either for a bishop or a knight something like this i don't know why Yermolinsky just simply decided to go back to normal stuff as if black had played d4 knight f6 c4 c5 d5 whether he just was wanted to stick to his preparation or just wanted to didn't want to bother with, with the sidelines and alternatives so black got to play the benko b5 cb5 a6 and now b takes a6 uh, when we had uh, yermolinsky here on um, on the commentary uh, we spoke of different things and i mentioned his book uh, road to chess improvement which uh, i found really very useful when i read it in the 90s a lot of interesting things a lot of insights and one of the things that he was writing about there also was uh, more openings and uh, some variations, how to create a repertoire and th things like this. And I remember him writing that he uh, did not really know what to do against the Benko Gambit because normally uh, he was opening his games with first move knight f3 and the Benko will never happen after knight f3. 
however, as he switched to, to first move d4, he was forced to deal with this uh, Benko Gambit, and he didn't really know what to do. He was experimenting with different ideas. And um, eventually, I remember him recommending here, uh, like uh, CB5, A6. How was it actually? Mm, okay, F first, he also knight f3, queen c2. He was dealing, he was uh, experimenting with these ideas, but lately it has been discovered that against both of these moves, the move b4 is black's best, both against knight queen c2 and knight f3. And uh, it turns out that this closing of the queen side is uh, acceptable for black and it's not that bad. Um, for example, I have used both knight f3 and queen c2 with very great re good results because mostly the, the players were not playing b4. Actually, I never, I would never faced b4. So it was always some the Benko players you know, usually wanted to keep it more fluid on the queen side. But latest theory suggests that b4 is good. So perhaps this is the reason that, okay, Hermoniski switched to uh, the main line to taking twice the pawn, so bishop a6. Again, this is a, let's say, the traditional way of playing the Benko, bishop a6. Modern way is playing g6 and not capturing on a6 just yet, as in some lines, for example, d6, the bishop can be developed to f5 and, for example, harass a rook that comes to b1 in some lines. So this is the considered the, the modern way, and the reason for uh, the Benko players developing this modern way of playing with g6 and not capturing an a6 is exactly uh, uh, the reason is the one we will see in this game actually. So bishop takes a6, we're going to see knight c3, g6, knight f3, bishop g7, e4 takes takes all standard theory, g3, king g2, and now a4. And this is the, the move that uh, basically, on, let's say, higher levels, in a way, buried the, the, this line of the Benko Gambit. It's considered now that uh, after b4, sorry, a4, uh, black, uh, sorry, white manages to establish a very uh, solid uh, structure on the queen side based on the moves knight b5. And then after some preparation, let's say queen c2 defending the pawn, and at some point maybe also even b3. So these points, okay, some danger on the diagonal, but white will prepare. So this structure of b3, a4, and knight on b5 effectively kills off black's counterplay, traditional counterplay on the a and b files. So this is obviously on a, on a higher level, and white needs to have some uh, good preparation and... Uh, required technique to uh, kind of control black's counterplay that's why I say on higher levels uh, so this was the reason uh, that um, black players started to look for alternatives earlier and they came up with the move g6 instead of taking on a6 <coughs> so a4 rook a6 queen c2 played all standard theory the queen defends the pawn okay and now White prepares knight b5, and then possibly maybe rook b1, b3, and then everything is perfectly defended. Maybe the rook will come to b2 to oppose the, the bishop on g7, and uh, black is devoid of his usual Benko counterplay. So we will see how this develops. Uh, I expect Hermoniski to show the necessary precision for controlling black's counterplay. So for now, okay, still opening phase, yeah. Let's check the games on board two, which is Italy against Montenegro. Board one, <coughs> we have David against Pajkovic, and we have the, the Petrov. First time we see the Petrov, no, actually it's not the first time. Godena once faced it in one of his games. But uh, in that game, he played the line knight e5, if you remember, d6, knight f3, knight e4, and bishop d3. Here, David goes for d4, one of the main, the other main line, except up, I um, mean, um, beside knight, uh, knight e5. So knight e4, and bishop d3, and now knight c6. <coughs> I remember this was a major revelation somewhere in the 90s when the move was introduced. 
because at first sight it looks like uh, Black forgot about his knight, but in fact Black manages to get the piece back like this. Since then a lot of uh, uh, theory has developed here, White tried has tried many moves, so um, for example I remember after bishop e4 d5 I remember something like uh, how did it go now I can't remember there was some end game that I played with white actually can't remember now it was something like 95 maybe and uh, and uh, 95 d5 d4 queen d8 and so on I'm not sure uh, anyway Black, white played knight e5, exchange on e5, knight c5, going after the uh, bishop, bishop c4, d6, queen f3. Well, judging by the time spent, it seems that David prepared this, knight e6, bishop e3, obviously uh, he prepared because it's a pawn sacrifice, knight d2, bishop d6, long castle, short castle, knight e4. So David even gained some time on the clock. So he seems to be well inside his preparation. I see some comments. Okay, let me just check those. Uh, oh, weather too hot on Crete. Well, I envy that, to be honest. Uh, yeah, course plug. Yeah, exactly, course plug. That's right. Well, I have to do, my, I mean, I don't have a marketing team, so I have to do my own marketing, you know. <laughs> uh, so, it can be different in the early Queen B6 lines without, I mean, I'm not sure. Oh, uh, E3, Benko, Gambit. Well, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say, I mean, which lines I'll be. I'll be covering, you know. I, I mean, I always consult with Chessable how much I can I can uh, reveal. So I'm not sure. I, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say this. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I mean, Doctor Deepa Gore I explained about the Benko. It's uh, on higher levels. It's this line with a four. That's that's uh, I mean really problematic for Black and uh, basically on higher levels players really do have very deep preparation and uh, they like extra material if they can grab it and then uh, with that this preparation to neutralize uh, counterplay so mm, people are not that keen on giving up material so early so mm, a4 yeah Kornev and Kaufman yeah they probably I'm not surprised if other authors have recommended A4 against the Banco, so it's uh, yeah, not not a surprise. Yeah. Okay, Queen is seven here played in the uh, by Pajkovic, and now is the first move when David starts to think a little bit. Uh, the compensation is obvious, even if White just takes on D6, as after C D6, he will have really good control over the light squares and a bishop pair though obviously it would be a long-term compensation as the pawn cannot be regained quickly so let's move on to the next board Podlesnik against Godena so we had e4 e5 four knights bishop b5 bishop d6 Godena repeats his uh, choice from the game against Nedev d3 a6 and now i would say some surprise bishop takes c6 because now what happens is that okay dc and h3 now what happens is that we have some sort of an anti-berlin with d3 so we have something like this yeah bishop b5 knight f6 d3 bishop c5 bishop c6 dc so knight c3 bishop d6 and h3 only that uh, uh, in our game we have an extra move for black which is the move a6 
So that doesn't really affect the position much, if at all. So basically we'll be witnessing here an anti-Berlin battle, H3. Uh, the, the main thing for Black to decide here is whether he, where he wants to castle. So one idea is to go bishop e6, queen e7, and then castle long. Another idea is to castle short, either now or later. For example, a uh, typical maneuver here in these lines is the move knight d7, and then the depending uh, on circumstances, the knight goes to c5, e6, or f5, f8, e6, or g6. So we are in for some maneuvering. Like I said, unless black decides to go for long castle, bishop e6, queen e7, long castle, when we can, he can hope to somehow uh, create an attack on the king side, then this is a, could be uh, an interesting plan, as white provided a hook with his last move h3. On the other hand, white can also castle long something, bishop e3, queen somewhere, and long castle long. So a lot of uh, room for maneuvers and different ideas and this is the main reason why uh, this line in the anti-Berlin with d3 and then capture on c6 is so popular on on, um, on the highest levels uh, it can't really be dried up with computer analysis it's all maneuvering uh, many moves are, are possible since they are of similar value and a little move here, a little move there, a small change here, a small change there allows these players to obtain perhaps some position from which they can play on. So we will see what Godena decides. Board 3, Ortega against Miljanic and we have a King's Indian. King's Indian with Bishop d3. d6, Knight g2, Knight c6, short castle and now Knight h5. Mm. I think in my, again, course plug, <laughs> in, in my King's Indian course on chessable, I think I recommended something like knight d7 followed by e5 and then knight d4. But knight h5 is also possible, it attacks the pawn on d4, bishop c2 and now e5. Now d5 will happen and the knight will go back to e7 uh, and black will try to push f5. It has to be said that with the knight on e2, uh, the traditional kingside play with f5 is not that dangerous, it will never really lead to an attack as uh, white usually uh, strikes with f4 in those positions. So plan is actually very simple for for white. He still wants to play on the queen side, yeah? Okay, so I'll just show you, let's say some move, let's say rook b1, and now f5, and usually white takes. And now depending how black takes, if black takes with a piece, let's say like this okay I'm not talking if g4 works or not doesn't matter what I'm trying to say is that then white obtains the this eternal square for the knight and is uh, these positions are generally considered slightly better for white and very safe and if if um, black takes with a pawn then normally the reaction is to play f4 and stop any activity on the king side on the king side sorry and now, okay, uh, black now needs to decide whether he keeps the tension, as normally e4 is not very good, as white really obtains access to the d4 square, and long term, some break on the king side with g4 can happen. So these are the main strategical uh, considerations when it comes to uh, about what both plans, are, I mean, plans for both sides are on the king side after f5. Okay, so uh, uh, Ortega thinking here. Board 4, Nikac against Borgo. We have the French, the classical variation, bishop g5 again, okay. We didn't get to c5 here, yeah? Which, like I said, is the most popular move. Bishop e7, standard move. Borgo is not going for the gambit h6, nor for the Rubinstein d4. So e5, knight e7, takes, takes, f4, a6, knight f3, c5, queen d2, knight c6, takes, takes, and bishop d3, all standard stuff till now. Usual play, uh, 
theoretically speaking white is slightly better but uh, in practice black is usually happy to play this position as it's a solid one typical French position giving him mm, well, mm, the usual French chances the question here for white is whether he will just castle short or long that's the decision he will have to make so theory here yeah. again all sort of more or less theoretical on except for David Baikovic that was kind of new to me but it was probably preparation for white so let's move on to the uh, next match which is Chinese women over 50 against England so we have on board one Shilan Liu against Adams and she goes for the exchange variation DC short castle and Queen f6 Adams plays the same line that he uh, used to beat uh, Gdansky in this tournament a very nice game sticks to his repertoire however Shilan Liu after d4 ed4 did not play the critical move bishop g5 which is the main line but rather she went for the end game directly queen d4 bishop d7 mm. the end game nowadays is considered really safe for black pretty problem free mm. as uh, obviously the the uh, the understanding how black should play these positions has crystallized over the years giving this type of position to to a great technical player like Adams probably is good news for him he's like almost 600 rating points rated higher so I would assume he fancies his chances to outplay his opponent in the endgame so bishop e3 long castle knight c3 knight e7 this is the usual development of the knight uh, it goes to g6 to control e5 f4 and sometimes it's also used to uh, support the f5 push so rook d1 knight g6 played by adams no f5 just yet f3 and h5 so h5 is a move to to kind of fight for the dark squares a little bit yeah maybe h4 will happen later on and trying to uh, control let's say this pawn majority that white has on the king side uh, at some point likely c5 will happen to chase away this knight from d4 probably supported by b6 and one common idea for uh, black in these uh, structures when the knight leaves d4 is that f5 push that i mentioned which um, eliminates the or aims to eliminate or exchange the e4 pawn because that's the pawn that gives white this central dominance and some space advantage so we expect a, an endgame grind here from Adams board 2 M's against Chung Hong Ning we had the French d4 d5 knight d2 the Taraj variation but Taraj transposing immediately to the Rubinstein variation and even with the bishop d7 move uh, I think this line was called Fort Knox <laughs> variation and the reason for this is that uh, black is really playing in a straightforward fashion uh, wants to exchange or the, okay I mean first develop the knight sorry the bad French bishop to the um, long diagonal not minding spending the time on that and then at some point that bishop is exchanged for a knight on f3 and c6 is played and black obtains this very solid uh, bunker style position and i presume that was the reason why this was called fort knox because black's position looks very solid the knight f3 bishop c6 bishop d3 knight d7 castles knight f6 knight g3 I remember at some point it, the knight g5 looked very 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 tempting as it introduced some sacrificial ideas and I think I've even won a game here with some of these ideas of sacrifice but nowadays uh, most people just drop the knight back to g3 or in some cases even on d2 the idea being that the knight from d2 can go to c4 and then to e5 so 
so it just gives white bigger better control over the e5 square matter of taste basically yeah knight g3 bishop e7 and now b3 a possible development for the bishop um, on the long diagonal short castle and bishop b2 so um, what i was saying uh, at some point bishop black plays bishop f3 and plays c6 and just hopes that this is strong enough to withhold white's sustained pressure thanks to the space advantage and the uh, pair of bishops black played a5 still not deciding to take on f3 we will see yeah this already i mean okay 95 for example is possible but then the bishop is not doing that badly on, on c6 with a5 some ideas like a4 a3 or maybe a b3 are on the menu it's curious that in the chinese team their stronger players are on boards three and four rather than one and two mm, i think so at least I, that's what i remembered but let me check no in fact in fact only board one is rated 2000 and all the others are rated 2200 so it's not going to be uh, i mean at least i don't expect it to be an easy walkover for example like i expect uh, on boards three and four in the match of the united states when they face 1900 players so not going to be that simple yeah. and the same goes for the italians because uh, montenegro they are all uh, fide master on board one and international masters on, on two to four through four not, go not going to be a easy match for sure so let's check board three. We have Yun Guo against Glenn Fleer, and we have the central game: d4, e4, queen d4, knight c6, queen e3. Queen c4 has been somewhat uh, seen lately as well. Queen e3 is the standard move. Knight f6, and now bishop d2. This is a way, an attempt to avoid the main lines after knight c3, bishop b4, bishop d2, short castle, long castle, and rook e8, which are considered to be pretty promising for black. And the queen really gets in the way. So bishop d2, and if bishop b4, now not knight c3 by transposition, but c3. So bishop drops back, and now c4. So this is a completely different game plan for white. Uh, because in the line which saw where white was castling long white is trying to play for an attack here by establishing the marozzi bind white is playing in a more positional manner uh, short castle knight c3 uh, and now knight g4 so what i mean if the clock times are correct Fleer spent like 13 minutes on knight g4 uh, so the marozzi bind makes sure that black cannot break in the center with d5 uh, the price the price white paid was a somewhat clumsy development of the queen and bishop and a lag in development generally by knight g4 maybe some f5 ideas are coming to the four queen e2 and now d6 or just the positional ideas like putting the knight on e5 maybe bishop on f6 and I, another idea which it's more mostly natural in these positions is to go d6 and then get the knight to d7 and c5 maybe a5 bishop f6 and you see how uh, black is playing on the dark squares in that case which is natural as white has put her pawns on light squares but i wouldn't be surprised if Lear goes for something more direct with f5 especially as the queen on e2 now blocks the development of the bishop on f1 so strategically white is doing okay but there is there are some risks involved in case the game is opened quickly and we will see if uh, Fleer strikes quickly with f5 or prefers more more positional means and on board four we have nigel davis against yan feng an and we have a main line of the Fianchetto Kings Indian. So knight f3, knight f6, c4, g6, g3, 
both sides Yanketo, then d4 d6 castles castle knight bd7 one of the main lines the other one being knight c6 the third one being c6 so knight c3 c6 first b3 rook e8 okay black will eventually play e5 so it will just be a transposition e4 e5 and h3 an important move controlling the g4 square and allowing for bishop e3 takes takes knight c5 rook e1 and a5 um, I remember when I was uh, s switching or starting to learn to play 1d4 which was um, uh, in the um, second half of the noughties um, my primary concern was what would I play against the King's Indian I wasn't that concerned with the other openings but I was concerned with the King's Indian because I have played it myself and I knew that there are always some tricks and annoying counterplay uh, for the black player there. Even if they are strategically busted, there would always be some trick or, or some tactic or whatever. And I was inspired by uh, the books by Boris Avruch, which were quite topical in that period. And in his books, he, he actually um, recommended the Fianchetto variation. He was recommending the Fianchetto against also against d5, recommending the Catalan and so on. And I was kind of... Uh, my own thinking was also going in that direction, as I was thinking, okay, if I just Fianchetto my bishop, I, it's very likely I won't get mated. And um, I studied this uh, in quite some depth. I was quite happy how things were going, and I won some nice games there. So... Um, and I can say that if white is well prepared in the Fianchetto variation, the variation is quite difficult one for, for black to play this line, except especially knight d7 and e5. So um, it's it's just that, like I said, if white is prepared, his play is really simple. So bishop f4, bishop e3 is the alternative, though then knight e4 needs to be calculated there, yeah? whether that pawn is hanging. Well, white just plays centrally okay queen goes to d2 or c2 depending yeah then the group comes to e d1 and uh, i mean there, there will be problems with the pawn on d6 if black somehow rearranges his uh, his uh, uh, pieces in such a way to deal with that those threats white also has the uh, pretty natural plan of expanding with bishop e3 and f4 yeah, sometimes bishop draws back to f2, g4 happens. It's just like a slow squeezing game uh, from white side. So like I said, I, I like these lines and uh, and I play them for quite some time. So uh, we will see how this, this continues. And the fourth match for the medals is England 2 against Iceland. Board 1, we have Dishman against Helgi Olafsson. So knight f3, knight f6, c4, e6, g3, and a6. Black is seeking less, less throwdown paths. Paths by playing b5. So bishop g2, b5, b3, bishop b7, castle c5. Yeah, something similar we saw in the game by Yermolinsky in one of the earlier rounds. Knight c3, attacking the pawn, queen b6, rook e1 d6 e4 so white is going for central expansion and now things start to happen quickly knight c6 and knight d5 played so peace sacrifice yeah so we already have some sharp stuff happening sometimes these peace sacrifices work uh, in the hedgehog, hedgehog and especially in the sicilian here what is white getting here i mean at first sight, it doesn't appear it should be sound because, like, all the pieces are pretty, pretty, I would say, passive. But okay, d4 played. Maybe, I mean, not passive, but not, let's say, ready to attack just yet. However, black is also entangled, though, I mean finding it difficult to develop though black can castle long if 
a need arises. So this is interesting already, quite sharp, quite sharp and uh, very risky for, I would say, even both sides, yeah. Like I said, I don't see anything concrete for white, but that may change because, okay, dc5 is a threat, and then if the queen takes, then black, white obtains the d4 square for the knight, maybe bishop e3 to harass the, the queen. And for, if the knight gets to d4, then it's a different story, That because that would be very similar to some uh, sacrifices in the Sicilian or in the Hedgehog. As the knight on d4 can then either go to c6 or f5 to put even more pressure on black's position. So the, here the key is whether um, black can prevent that, but at first sight it doesn't appear so because let's say after dc, dc, d6 is the immediate threat, yeah, then we're gaining the piece. Or after dc, dc also knight, the knight gets the e5 square and then maybe to c6. So maybe this is more dangerous than appeared at first sight. Hmm. Okay, that may be good news for England too then, helping England 1 perhaps in the fight for the med medals. Board 2, Hjartarsson against Lewis and another Benko Gambit. Only this time the variation with G3. That before the discovery of A4 in the, that we saw in the game by Hermolinski, the lines with g3 were considered the the most difficult to break down for for black and now we see uh Hjartarsson employing it so g6 and b3 now so white wants to fianchetto both bishops the one on b2 will be particularly important so that's why white did not play knight c3 so that after bishop g7 bishop d b2 he gets to oppose this very strong bishop on uh, on uh, b2 on g7 also the structure a2 b3 is just one step away from a4 and then the idea that we saw in the Yermolinsky game planting a knight on b5 it's a bit more difficult with this bishop alive but it still remains an idea so d6 bishop g2 knight bd7 and now knight h3 uh, the knight will go back to f4 from where it supports the d5 pawn and makes it more difficult for black to play in the center with d6. In some lines black does this, but here it's made less likely. Castles, castles, rook a7, rook e1, getting away from the pin, queen a8 and e4. So natural expansion in the center, rook b8 and now white is thinking. Uh, white has spent 6 minutes only to 27 spent by black, so probably white has prepared for this. Now the question is, okay, how to continue, whether uh, the knight goes to f4, whether the knight from b1 is developed, where it is developed. So, um, something to think about. Yeah, okay, knight d2. Knight d2, so... White avoids the usual c3 square in order to keep the diagonal uh, open. And another idea of the knight on d2 is that it defends the b3 pawn. So now a move like a4 is possible without worrying about the b3 pawn. So we'll see uh, whether white manages to extinguish black's traditional counterplay in the Benko in this game board 3 we have Clark against Arnason and uh, a Queen's Gambit accepted so c4 takes knight f3 <coughs> e3 a6 bishop c4 e6 short castle b5 uh, I spoke about this when uh, we saw the Queen's Gambit declined and played by Godena and I expressed my opinion that this I found this I find this line uh, somewhat dubious for black uh, the reason being that it's, I feel it's just a bit premature and I explained there that uh, I think best move for white is bishop d3 keeping e2 for the queen and also supporting the e4 push and then this is followed by a4 and if b4 then the knight can come to d2 c4 or b3 and white really gets uh, good play 
So I don't think it's the the most solid line from Black's perspective, but okay, here we see Arnason playing it and what going bishop e2. Bishop b7, a4, b4, knight d2, knight d7, knight b3. It's another possible way. I also think why this is not a practical line for Black is that White really gets easy play. Even if he doesn't know theory, just some common sense moves like let's say bishop e2 and get the knight to play a4, we get the knight to b3 on a good square, threatening some moves like knight a5, okay, c5 must be played. But it just looks very, very solid and uh, and uh, gives White some easy play against what I think is Black's prematurely expanded uh, queenside. Okay, c5 played, it's possible to take, also bishop d2 is a possible, a5 perhaps. So a choice of moves here for for white. On board three we have Thoralson against Stebbings and an Alapin. So knight f3, e6, c3, all the rage nowadays. Uh, we see all this uh, starting from Carlsen, Epomiachi and everybody else playing the Alapin nowadays. I somehow see it as a, as a kind of a desperate search for something fresh against the Sicilian. Uh, the Alapin can lead to some very dull positions, but even that is better than for them probably than the dull positions they're getting in some 30 move forcing variations in the night or, for, or elsewhere. So Kramnik also <laughs> yeah, played this... Uh, in his online games, also some over the board games, he also played it. Uh, so it's, uh, it's just something fresh for these players. And uh, well, on lower levels, though, it's a practical choice, the Alapin, because you can't really be surprised. You get your opening in on as early as move two. So it's, uh, uh, it's a practical choice, <coughs> even though uh, it is black who chooses the line against the Alapin, yeah? whether that be by knight f6 or d5 or maybe something else. So it's, um, I mean, yeah, a possible approach to, to opening, to creation of an opening repertoire. Like I've mentioned it more than once, Godena has played it all his life and he's done pretty well with it. Knight f6, the alternative being d5, obviously. e5, knight e5, d4 takes, takes, d6, bishop c4. Uh, this has by far replaced the previously considered main line with a3 the idea being to control the b4 square and allow for bishop d3 and the reason this is no longer played today is because uh, it's a bit slow and black is just in time to get the bishop out to c6 i've played this system with with black with e6 d6 for many years dare even say decades and uh, I've had great results uh, in this line with a3 as it's really comfortable for for black the bishop comes out to c6 knight comes to d7 and then the bishop is developed either to e7 or e sometimes with g7 short castle and all all pieces are well developed so that's why white normally nowadays plays knight bishop c4 bishop e7 it's it makes some sense for black to delay if possible the development of the knight on b8 not to play knight c6 too early as additional options appear mainly uh, the move b6 uh, with the idea of bishop b7 when the knight can also be developed to d7 so castles castles queen e2 and b6 this is the move that i, I have also played many times uh, and has been really uh, great experience uh, with it, I really had great results. Uh, and here it turns out that there is only one uh, line for white where he can actually try to put some pressure on uh, on black. And it's a surprising line because it's not what you would expect. So it starts with rook d1 and after bishop b7, bishop d5. And the point is that uh, okay, now ed5 is normally played, and then white obtains perhaps some some pressure with bishop f4, as this bishop b7, b6 is not ideal when we have a fixed center on d4, d5, as d6 and e5 will be exchanged soon enough. 
uh, the point being that the uh, more desirable knight in bishop d5 is met by knight c3 and if bishop goes back then d5 is very strong and then you see the importance of placing a rook on the d file whereas after taking on f3 and d5 uh, white has some some pressure here in this french structure something like maybe queen g4 and then bishop h6 yeah maybe rook d3 and so on so it's not entirely pleasant for black so if it weren't for this line rook d1 which is i would say even pretty dull but uh, white has the more pleasant is on the more pleasant side of the dull game uh, the line would have been ideal in the game white plays queen e4 and this is not critical for sure uh, bishop a6 bishop b7 is also possible but this makes sense as white's idea was pretty brutal to go bishop d3 and exchanging light squares bishop is in uh, it's in um, uh, black's favor in fact this is a pawn sacrifice i think okay let me check because i remember looking at this and uh, i have analyzed this really 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 in some depth so i will just say um, bishop c4 bishop e 7 okay yeah queen e4 bishop a6 yeah yeah now there is this uh, sacrifice which i mentioned so bishop d5 e d5 queen d5 attacking the rook is met by knight c6 a very nice tactic the point being that if queen c6 there is something like bishop f1 king f1 rook c8 and then black regains the piece i mean black wins actually material yeah because it wins the bishop on c1 so b3 played mm. I have looked at knight d2, bishop a6, and b3, and now here a black played queen c8, whereas what I have analyzed is d takes e5, d takes e5, and bishop b7. Now that the bishop is defended, then after queen g4, king h8, and the white doesn't really have an attack, whereas black develops knight d7, knight c5, yeah, rook c8, and so on. Quite a pleasant position for black. So queen c8 is something I have not looked at. Bishop g5 is a thematic move as um, as much as black likes to exchange the light squared bishops yeah, in order to avoid attack and, um, and exchange white's better bishop. White wants to exchange dark squared bishop because this is an important bishop as it uh, guards the d6 square. So after a possible exchange, some knight maneuver, let's say, landing on d6 may be possible so now knight d7 played by by black so in spite of all this black is fine uh, obviously as i think this queen e4 line is not really critical so uh, yeah we will see how it goes okay uh, in the meantime let me check if you have some comments okay for Knox okay uh, yeah Deepa Gore yeah he won the best line against the Karo Khan well <laughs> I wish I knew that you know I mean uh, course plug yeah uh, I mean what I recommended in, in my course was this exchange variation with knight f3 and then followed by knight e5 I mentioned this is one in, in one of the uh, previous uh, streams there is no one best variation against the Karo Khan it's, uh, it's a very solid opening and you can't really say that uh, one line is better than the other it's mostly about what you prepare it's uh, which position you feel like playing some days you may feel like playing the advanced variation some days you may feel like playing the exchange variation I have experimented with the Karo Khan I have played I think everything against it uh, pan of attack exchange variation main lines after knight c3 or knight d2 i have any, even played the, uh, uh, the the obviously the advanced and i have also played the king's indian attack e4 c6 d3 yeah d5 knight d2 
and this is also very interesting and I think a bit under appreciated because White does not necessarily have to go for G3, there are also some active planes with Knight F3 and D4 in the center. So yeah, I mean not I don't I don't think there is one single line, yeah, that's best against the Karaka. Okay, Fianchetto against the kid in my chessable course. Nope. You're not going to get that. Too complicated. <laughs> After all, it, sh it will be a s it, it, it's called a simplified course. So I try to to make some practical decisions and suggest uh, lines that are not too dependent on theory and that are somewhat, let's say, easier to to grasp and, and play. So yeah, the two knights against the Karakan. I have also tried that, but I never really liked it from White's perspective because of that line, Bishop G4. As I mentioned some other day, so knight c3, knight f3, bishop g4 takes on f3, e6. Yeah, white has the bishop pair, but black has this great central triangle, c6, d5, e6, and the bishops don't matter that much. So I never liked that, but obviously it's possible to play that, yeah. Uh, Dishman game, plus three, well, uh, I'm not surprised, yeah. Not surprised, yeah, but by that, but uh, we, we will go back to that, yeah. Bingo Warriors, okay, probably some bot got in here, yeah. Maybe we are becoming popular on the last day, you know, if we get bots here posting rubbish. Uh, so, um, okay, now it's time to move to the S65, and there, okay, just to get to the games. There we have a pretty straightforward situation as the top three teams are more or less determined. They also play uh, certain outsiders. So we have Germany Lasker playing Germany. <laughs> okay, uh, funny pairing for the last round. England one playing Switzerland and Slovakia playing France. And since Germany is two points ahead of England and England is two points ahead of Slovakia, even a drawn match secures their spot. Though I would expect them still to win their matches and um, finish where they are, basically Germany last year winning, England coming in second, and Slovakia ending third. So in the, in this sense, it's a much simpler um, it's a much simpler situation when it comes to the fight for the medals. Well, we'll still look at the games, obviously. So Knack against Mil Miltner. And we get the Polish defense again, d4, b5. Maybe this is tribute to Lukasz Turley from Poland, who just arrived here. He's the secretary of the management board, I think, in FIDE. Uh, and uh, he arrived, I think, yesterday, not today. Uh, we had a pleasant lunch today, and maybe, okay, uh, this was some sort of a tribute. And a curious reaction by Knack, c3. Well, definitely solid, but <laughs> not really critical e6 now I mean the idea of b5 is to go bishop b7 so just go bishop b7 and maybe prevent e4 yeah but e6 e4 a6 a4 b4 knight f3 I mean here it would have been nice to maybe to play c4 and, and, and I think I had something similar recommended in the, my e4 co simplified course which was something brutal with f4 Knight f3, bishop e3, and just total domination. Okay, knight f3, c5, bishop d3, takes, takes. Very comfortable for, for white, obviously, yeah. Very comfortable, nice center, good development. So at some point, okay, white will decide. They attack knight b3, bishop d2, they're all moves that improve the position. And white will decide at some point where to play, okay. Uh, if he wants to play on the queen side, queen bishop, knight b3, queen d2, maybe a5, putting a rook on c1, makes sense as the uh, they will the, the almost all the pieces would be looking towards the queen side. But there is also a way to play on the king side. Let's say rook e1, knight f1, knight g3, and e5 at some point. Yeah, and then you have all these knights and bishops and everything looking towards the king side. So in a way, white is spoiled for choice here. 
where he wants to play. Not a great opening for black, yeah. Weimer against Meister. London system. Woohoo! So excited. And exciting. E3, knight c6, c3, 6, knight d2, bishop d6. Okay, playing bishop d6 before knight f6. I'm not sure if it has any benefits, but uh, we'll see. Takes, takes, queen g4, king f8. So maybe there are not that many benefits if black is forced to go king f8, yeah. Not forced, yeah, could have gone g6, but okay. f4. Makes sense, the stone wall is not that bad when you lack, when you miss that bad bishop. Knight f6, queen h4, knight e7, trying to harass the queen, yeah. Knight e2, strange move. Why to e2? The knight belongs to e5. Ah, ah okay, I see why not knight e. Okay, if knight f3, knight f5, there are problems with the pawn. Queen f2, knight g4, yeah. Oh well. Knight e2. I would still have done something to avoid putting the knight on e2, on e but okay. Knight f5, queen h3, h5, queen f3. Very strange play, but. Um, queen b6. What happens if knight g4? Yeah. Really strange position. I mean, likely e4, but then I don't think this is that perhaps that bad for black. Okay, original at least. Queen b6, castles, bishop d7. Okay, well, it would have been good for white, but he's really suffering for, for because of these knights. I mean, this knight should be coming to e5, but they're all stepping on each other's toes. Yeah, the knight on d2 can't go to f3 because the queen is there. The bishop cannot be developed to d3 because the knight is on e2. So it's quite uh, kind of very claustrophobic for white, I would say. Let's see Kalinchev on board 3 against Kiefer. What did we have here? Okay, Sicilian a6 takes on c6 and queen f3 queen f3 the queen is en route to g3 so queen d3 has also been played and d5 queen g3 yeah amounts to the same and she d4 okay this i don't think it's that great because fixing the structure just uh, gives white really good access to the light squares here knight d1 there was something to be said for knight b1. Uh, this is a faster way to get to c4. Okay, knight d1, knight f6, bishop d3, bishop d6, f4, e5. Okay, this is already quite sharp. I mean, if queen g7, rook g8, and queen h6, rook g2 is probably just a mess that white doesn't really will go, want to go into because. Uh, he has the better structure thanks to these nice light squares here so he would like to keep it uh, controlled e5 and now f takes e5 queen a5 check probably just castling was fine too even though it's also sharp yeah if e f4 so now not this because of probably knight h5 but queen g7, rook g8 and queen h6. I'm not sure how good this is, if it's good at all or anything, but it's definitely sharp. Uh, okay, fe5, play, check, take on e5, exchange on e5, knight f2. So you see now the knight is kind of, well, um, roaming around without a good spot. I would have preferred it on c4 knight g4 now so exchanging it doesn't make sense because the knight was really uh, lacking a good but maybe the plan was i mean i don't know if now but knight, bishop c4 knight d3 but e4 is hanging so so exchanging the knight that it cannot find a place not to so i mean maybe it's okay castles bishop e6 and now both sides have their weaknesses white has an isolated pawn on e4 black has 
and 1 on a6. So b4 played, okay. So maybe there was something to be said for a5, yeah. But b4 just fixes the pawn on a6. Looks like a good positional move. King d7, a4, rook c8, rook b1, c5, trying to break the the grip. Takes takes and a5. So now I've quite fixed that weakness on a6. But well, I just think that black's activity should suffice, especially as he also has the king close by. So will Kalinchev win a, a one more game and end up with eight and a half out of nine? We'll see. The position doesn't promise much, but when you play well and you're in good form, you win just any type of position. So let's see board four. Kirtek against Köhler, King's Indian with h3. The Macagon of variation. And in fact, I, uh, as I started talking about the, me playing the Fianchetto King's Indian, I actually started it, uh, kind of uh, uh, progressing and, and incorporating other lines against the King's Indian in my. After the Fianchetto, I started playing the Gligoric system, which was knight f. Okay, let me show you what I mean by the Gligoric system. Okay, bishop e2, e5, and bishop e3. Yeah. So this was the, the system I played the least, but I think I won all my games in it, or something like that. But this also wasn't entirely to my liking, and eventually I settled on the Makagonov variation with h3, and this was really a bullseye for me as I, when I started playing this, I won my first 10 games with it, and with some strong op opponents as well. So it was really a great system, which is not an easy one to play for, for either side. Uh, it needs really careful study of, of the lines and the move orders and uh, positions. I have seen King's Indian experts like Topalo for, and Smirin end up in strategically busted positions very quickly after the opening. So it's not an, a line that can be played just based on general understanding and such. It requires really careful study. And I remember when I was studying this for white, I was, I was using two chess boards two magnetic sets when on one I would be playing the line and on the other one I would be checking the alter the uh, transpositions and writing these things down writing uh, notes on reactions how black sh white should react in certain positions what white plays in certain positions because positions can get very similar with small differences but they can be very important so it took me a while I think I studied this like intensively for a full week like this checking transpositions, checking move orders, plans, and so on. And even after that, and, and preparing for the game before, I would still mess up the move order, for example. Yeah, I would still mess up something. Luckily, my opponents were even less prepared or less um, had less understanding, so I would still win the games. Uh, but it's not an easy system to play. Uh, when I played it, I, I played it, I preferred it to, to play it with the bishop on g5 rather than on e3 as here and the point is that it's a provocation when when a lot of my opponents would fall into and the provocation is that uh, the natural move h6 which black usually plays in the king's indian pretty much always when the bishop appears to g5 is in fact favorable for 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 white the bishop will drop back to e3 uh, and uh, the loss of tempo is less important than what white gained by provoking h6, which is weakening of the g6 square. In some lines, knight goes to h4 to target it. And a possible tempo gain later on by attacking that pawn on h6. And third is also, uh, in some lines, the bishop may come to h6 as well. So all these advantages that white gains over uh, outweigh the loss of a tempo. Okay, that's... Uh, enough of general talk let's check the game bishop e3 knight fd7 okay as, as mentioned black can vary the move orders white can do the same uh, 
principle the question is does black play e5 or c5 and that's all that needs to be decided with knight fd7 it's clear that he will go e5 so d5 a5 and now the knights come to a6 yeah and this knight frees the path for the f-pawn maybe it will come to c5 c6 knight b6 all these ideas black can play on both sides of the board g4 is a standard way of stopping or discouraging at least f5, knight a6, bishop d3. I usually preferred the bishop to e on e2, and then queen c2 followed by long castle. And in fact, white gets to attack on the king side, which is a rarity in the king's Indian, and one of the reasons why I actually started to like a lot this Makagonov system is uh, it turns the tables, because black is usually the one who's uh, used to attacking in the king's Indian, attacking the king, and here it, white gets to do that which I also think is psychologically unpleasant for the second player. Bishop d3, I'm not, I don't really like it because after knight c5, then the bishop can be exchanged and white in fact wants to keep this seemingly bad bishop because after something like f5 and exchanges on f5, the bishop will become actually quite good in controlling d4 square and uh, now open b1 h7 diagonal later on, obviously c6 played by black made possible that the d file is closed so dc6 otherwise queen d6 wins a pawn but not here a3 stopping knight b4 and knight b6 not sure why that knight went there the natural move would have been to put the knight on c5 mm, this one or the other one and then after bishop c2 perhaps to to prepare maybe cd to take on d5 maybe prepare b5 and so on okay knight b6 play maybe the idea is to go knight c5 and then the bishop cannot retreat to c2 as the pawn on c4 is hanging but and the knight on okay then maybe bishop e2 or even bishop takes c5 it's possible Maybe the idea is to go knight c5 and a4, but like I said, when the knight appears on c5, a positional idea for white is to take on c5, and after dc, then uh, it kills off the dynamism in the position with these doubled pawns, and white is really strong on the light squares, and this compensates for the lack of the dark squared bishop. We will see, okay. Let's move on to the game, uh, to the England against Switzerland. John Nunn against Heinz Wirtenson. So e4 c5, knight f3, knight c6, and bishop b5 by Nunn. I can't say I know what Wirtenson would have played had Nunn played the open Sicilian with d4. But since he played bishop b5, he obviously decided to go here. g6 takes us on c6. The alternative is obviously a short castle. bc equally popular is dc and now d4 this is a pretty direct approach normally white plays short castle but this is direct and after cd4 uh, there is also the the line with bishop g7 and after dc let's say some check and then take on c5 but normally cd and f6 is how black plays here castles d6 bishop e3 knight h6 knight c3 i remember there was a game between vashiela graf and carlsen which carlsen won in very nice style when uh, i think c4 was played establishing this morosi bind but black was actually quite good all right after c5 bishop b7 and something like knight f7 bishop g7 castle and then he started i think undermining the center or something like with f5 if i remember correctly turned out pretty well for black but here, none goes for knight c3, more peace development, knight f7. And now you see that uh, if you look strategically, black is doing really great. Pair of bishops, very compact central structure. And that means that his long-term prospects are really good. So white must play dynamically in order to prevent these long-term -term prospects coming to the fore. So white must do something more urgently in the very near future to take advantage of his uh, 
his advantage in development and not allow black to consolidate so it's already a sharp game in this respect that white needs to be active and, and do something uh, fast so queen c4 attacking the pawn bishop d7 knight d4 intending knight d6 or knight c6 queen c8 defense against both and f4 bishop h6 pinning the f pawn and rook a e1 and now e5 by black okay this is already very 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 sharp so yeah a lot of things happening as uh, for example after capture on e5 the f file is opened and after knight e5 for example the king cannot steal castle as the queen is still on the same diagonal but though i'm not sure the king the queen can stay there because queen b3 can be made by rook b8 obviously the bishops would be exchanged on e3 so quite sharp and not surprising that white is thinking what to do alternative is just to move the knight but then likely black can castle okay already very interesting position yeah, uh, Krasenkov, yeah, I looked at a lot of Krasenkov games when studying the Makagonov. I agree. Uh, there was really some model games by, by Krasenkov uh, played in that line, definitely. Let's see what happens on board 2. Another exchange variation in the Lopez, played by Erisman against Kosten. Only this time Kosten goes for the bishop g4 line h3 and now bishop h5 this is s s relatively modern uh, development no uh, in the past everybody was playing h5 and the bishop cannot be taken because then the knight hangs and if the knight moves queen h4 happens and it's coming unpleasant so there is a lot of theory after uh, uh, h5 but bishop h5 uh, is, is in a way more ambitious because it maintains the pin yeah because in the, in the h5 line something like d3 queen f6 knight d2 at some point uh, was it no it was h5 it was, how was this yeah i think it was something like d3 queen f6 and there is also bishop e3 and at some point what happens is that black is takes on f3 and there is an endgame whereas with bishop h5 this will not happen the drawback obviously being that g4 and knight e5 wins a pawn and uh, apparently kosten has done his preparation and found some ideas here he goes bishop d6 takes on g6 hg now the pawn is hanging and there are ideas like queen h4 so queen f3 defense against this and now f5 wow this is this is really explosive let me check because i have obviously looked at this so um, i want to see i mean i haven't looked at very deeply in this bishop h5 line but i've looked at something so let, i'm just curious to uh, to see what I have looked at. So bishop g4, h3, bishop h5. No, actually I, I haven't looked at bishop d6, I've only looked at queen h4. But I like to look at it now. Uh, queen h4 is the main move, but let's see bishop d6. Knight takes g6, hg, queen f3. Okay, after queen f3, main move again is queen h4 but there is also queen d7 which scores really well for black in 30 games black scores almost 70 percent which is quite a lot obviously and f5 has been played only well i have some um, i have some uh, computer games and some Human players, okay. Yannick Igor, uh, rated 25-19, has played it. 
when after the five when the main moves are I mean main moves the moves here that have been played are very few only three games so it's not that big amount of theory e5 and d4 e5 was played here in the game bishop c5 king g2 queen d7 c3 threatening obviously d4 now f takes g4 queen takes g4 so what happens if h g4 is that scary or how scary it is maybe just attack the pawn here yeah? d4 maybe take i don't know if this is working okay probably something why i didn't like so he wanted to take with the queen and queen d3 now stopping d4 f4 Oof, doesn't look too great knight is seven queen f3 and long castle so obviously there was no theory involved here for a very long time now now what's obvious is that black has definite compensation the queen side is not getting developed anytime soon then soon the knight is coming to f5 this looks very promising for black okay great preparation by Koston, yeah I need to check this line. Okay, need to check the line as uh, make a note. And uh, instead of f5, there is also this queen d7 move that's been played more uh, recently by Clementi Sichev, uh, a grandmaster. Also played by Prusikin, we mentioned him. Johnny Hector as well, so quite some strong players having played Queen D7. Perhaps this is worth investigating as an interesting uh, choice against the exchange variation in the Lopez. Yeah, that's Yannick played it, yeah. So exchange on d3, rook d3 is coming, then h3 is hanging. But there is also just uh, knight f5, knight h4, and some just attack against the king because these pieces are not coming into play. Okay, great, great preparation by 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 Kosten here. Chapman against Steichl. Stehlin, Stehlin. Uh, what did we have here? Knight f3, d5, g3, knight d7. This became uh, popular when uh, Kirill Alexenko used it to beat uh, Sergei Karyakin in the last round of the Isle of Man Grand Swiss event in 2020 or 19 probably. Uh, which gave Alexenko the spot to the 2020 candidates tournament. So ever since then, it's been a really uh, sort of a shortcut choice for black, as there is immediately the threat of e5 establishing a full center. So in white is forced to go d4, and this eliminates a lot of these ratty things with c4, b3, and so on. Knight b6 now, okay, freeing the path for the bishop and discouraging c4. Bishop g2, knight f6, knight bd2, c6. Normally the bishop is developed earlier to f5 and then e6 is played. Uh, b3, still going for c4. Bishop f5 now, knight h4, bishop knight e4, okay. So the threat is knight c3, yeah, so it takes on e4, f3. Otherwise, the knight is stranded on h4 if white takes on e4. So f3 goes back. So white got the bishop pair. But black is extremely solid. The typical Slav scenario, in fact. Queen d3, bishop e7, bishop e3. Somewhat strange development is bishop e3. For now, it's not quite clear where the bishop should be placed. And uh, what's clear is that white must start pushing something in the center, c4, e4. So it was worth perhaps thinking what to push and then decide on the placement of the bishop later on. 
because I somehow feel this is premature. So rook c8, rook c1, rook a3, bishop a3 going back, e4, f4 now. Again, I mean, strategically, when, uh, when uh, one side has the bishop pair, makes sense to place the pawns on the square color of the opponent's bishop because that limits the bishop and opens up space for your own unopposed bishop and your own limited bishop will have to live with it for a while but again I'm not sure this was necessary anyway a6 also not necessary c4 knight d7 c5 bishop e7 b4 so the position remains closed black remains solid and uh, we are in for a long game here white's plan now he, he determined it by pushing f4 and c5 that he will like to advance on the queen side but <clears throat> with the bishops not very effective it's not clear what this will bring black on the other hand also does not have too many active possibilities one is to go g5 though i'm not sure he should do that because f5 may be an option then mm. or he's simply just taking opening the f file so black may also be forced to wait sit and wait complex strategical position and on board four we have bright against Powach and uh, Benoni modern Benoni always a welcome sight e4 a6 yeah this is the modern refinement in the past everybody was playing bishop g7 uh, but that allows this plan with h3 bishop d3 and whereas with a6 if white wants to play I mean with this move order if black wants to be precise he can prevent white from playing the system h3 e4 bishop d3 so for example if white starts with h3 there is a6 again a4 and now queen is 7 and there is no e4 again so there are move orders when uh, black can stop h3 bishop e, h3 e4 and bishop d3 system and here is this move a6 a4 and bishop g4 so black manages to bishop e2 takes takes and bishop g7 and generally this is considered to be acceptable version of the benoni for uh, for black having got rid of the light squared bishop which is considered a success as that piece is the worst piece for black in the benoni castles castles rook e1 knight bd7 queen c2 rook b8 bishop e2 knight e8 this is a possible way to prepare the b5 push an alternative plan obviously is to put a rook on e8 go something like queen c7 c4 then knight c5 and b5 and so on but okay knight e8 knight c7 a5 stopping b5 now knight e5 maybe it was still possible to go b5 and after taking on b6 taking with the rook if black did not want to sacrifice a pawn or maybe the, sac the sacrifice was possible let's say let's say bishop a6 takes takes something like knight c4 and it appears that okay the black has some banko like compensation maybe not entirely sound but it's a possible idea in the benoni anyway Still, why black played knight e5? So likely the bishop will drop back, as the bishop is valuable in controlling these queenside activities. Generally, black is doing fine here, I think, as uh, white still hasn't even moved to uh, start preparing the e5 push. So it's it's quite a good version of the Benoni for 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 black. So uh, okay, no comments there just yet. 
So, okay, we, we finished the first roundup of the games in both sections. And um, we'll take a short break now, during which I will usually do my popping down to the playing hall. So, um, well, just I'll check what's going on and I'll see you back. See you soon. Cheers.
Continua. Ah, é caixa de cor. Hi and welcome back to the live commentary of the final round of the World Senior Team Championship. Well, uh, things have developed in the meantime while we were on the break, and we have the first result. In fact, as uh, Gregory Kaidanov already beat Vitalis Sapis, I uh, went to the playing hole. The game was basically decided. So uh, we have the position here. Queen f4 being played. Uh, you see how quickly things deteriorated for uh, black in the Chebanenko. So bc, bc, knight d7, a5, e5. Already this is very risky. Queen a4, bishop takes f3, g f3, e d4, e d4, c5. Okay, this is already suicidal as uh, black still has a king in the center hasn't developed and even opens up the game knight takes d5 cd4 bishop h3 and it's already white taking over the initiative castling is happening and uh, bishop e7 knight f6 check bishop f6 castles uh, rook a7 bishop a3 preventing castling and it's the, the end is nigh queen c7 rook b1 queen f4 and now i guess just check on one or really um, anything should win yeah rookie one and uh, even maybe bishop d7 and rookie one then because bishop e7 is not possible rookie seven is coming because of the pin so this is basically game over and one nil already for the americans in the yeah it is an opening disaster but uh, i mean it's I would I would attribute it to bad bad preparation, and that sometimes means no preparation. Yeah, so we're just playing badly. Okay, queen c6 play, that also should suffice. So just really really bad, bad game for the Polish team. On board one though things are more or less okay. You see, uh, it's, it's funny that White played Tal's move a3. The idea is to stop bishop before ideas so that white can go f4, queen f3, and so on. So b5 played, now knight c6. Knight c6 is the usual reaction to b5, even though here f4 could be played. But nothing wrong with knight c6. Now black can take both with queen and pawn, matter of choice. He took with a pawn, f4, bishop b7, bishop d3, c5. This is considered generally okay for black, uh, though. Obviously, it's a playable position in castles. Rook d8, queen e1, getting away from the pin. Knight f6, e5, knight d5, bishop e4, bishop e7. Mm. I suppose black could have taken on e3, but he preferred to, to have a different structure. Bishop e7 and knight d5, e d5. Again, nothing wrong with taking with the bishop. Yeah, black is perfectly fine here. But he took with a pawn, bishop f3, c castles actually, bishop d2, uh, threatening bishop a5, but also defending the pawn and threatening f5. So c4 now. The idea is if bishop a5 to give check and get away from the uh, skewer. Bishop a5, okay, okay, another check. Bishop c5 and bishop b6. Now bishop b4. I guess it is possible to repeat, but uh, rook e8 is also looking quite alright for black. I mean, a double edged decision to take ed5. Bishop d5 was much safer. Chabalov is not a safe player, so perhaps not surprising that he went for this. Board 3, it was the uh, the London system, and we've had quite some developments. Black advanced on the queen side, white just tries some threats on the king side. 
but with this bishop on e4 I think it's kind of difficult to create anything as the bishop controls both the g2 square so there is no queen g2 and also covers squares on the king side so this looks okay for black but okay white will certainly try to create some chances and on board four I guess a typical transformation in the Benko when white when black plays e6 and a typical position where uh, uh, the compensation has evaporated you see this structure that I spoke of at the beginning was established b3 a4 knight b5 and um, yeah that just kills off black's counterplay on the queen side which means that black was forced to go e6 and c counterplay in the center but after these exchanges nothing much is left out of the counterplay move like d3 weakens the c4 square yeah i mean move like d4 sorry and uh, white is a clear pawn up for the time being that's not felt because the extra pawn is on the king side three against two but long term it's just uh, should be a, just a, i mean a, a winning position for for white i mean the immediate threat is 97 so uh, we'll see yeah so the americans look set for a comfortable win at least okay david against pajkovic something okay happened here when we were looking at 94 queen e7 was played rook h e1 and now here black decided to simplify the position probably didn't like it so much knight d4 was played and after bishop d4 e d4 knight takes d6 queen d6 rook d4 it's a very nice move in fact point being that if queen d4 queen f7 rook f7 and rook e8 is a mate white regained the pawn and kept the initiative because look at his pieces they're all very very active so queen h6 check only move queen e3 now maybe king b1 was also okay okay queen e3 takes on e3 rook takes e3 and it's a very strong initiative in the end game bishop e6 probably the only move to survive takes takes f3 rook f6 defending the pawn and king d2 this was also the situation the position i saw in the playing hall when uh, david was thinking and eventually he played king d2 it's a uh, it's a very unpleasant position for black because it's not so much about this e6 pawn which can be defended and will be defended yeah but it's about the possible white active possibilities with rook d7 so for example king f7 is not possible because rook d7 is a check and these pawns uh, the, sorry these rooks can easily go about targeting black's pawns on the queen side so it's an unpleasant rook end game for for black for sure so black is in for for a long suffering uh, podlesny godena we left off at h3 and godena didn't bother himself too much about thinking where to castle he just castled short that which was available so did white white could have given the game a sharper flare with moves like bishop e3 or bishop g5 followed by maybe queen e2 d2 and castling long and then maybe going for g4 but okay this castle short was played a5 one of the ideas for black in this position is to grab some queen side space so white stops it a4 now knight d7 this was the maneuver i was talking about the knight is not well placed on f6 with d3 safely defended so knight d7 bishop e3 and rook e8 so the knight goes to f8 knight d2 knight f8 knight c4 uh, the immediate f4 um, i suppose it's possible though probably shouldn't really bring much normally black takes and now maybe knight g6 okay or take first maybe give one check maybe not yeah and then knight g6 okay f1 and something like f6 so uh, 
it's, it's, it's a typical transformation of the structure uh, playing f4 I mentioned this because after knight c4 knight g6 it's more difficult to push f4 as the knight now controls that square so that was a moment when uh, uh, white could have played f4 yeah, under better circumstances but okay that moment went knight e2 now he wants to support it maybe like this bishop f8 yeah f4 is not possible now is possible but queen d2 bishop b4 queen c1 bishop e6 and knight e2 so some strange maneuvering for white to be honest uh why for example here after bishop f8 did not he play f4 which begs to be played obviously mm. And it is what's most natural and more or less only plan here to push f4. Black is fine, yeah. It just exchange some everything, put a bishop on e6. Well, that's how the game should develop, but just like this, I don't know. Knight d2, bishop d6. So now the bishop returned to make f4 more difficult. So you see this maneuvering happening here. So Ortega against Miljanic and we saw something which I did not expect. I was talking about the uh, possible reactions when uh, uh, to meet f5 and uh, one of those was to take on after e5 g5 to play f4 but I did not expect white would play f4 here. Generally speaking it's not such a great idea to open the long diagonal for the dark squared bishop. But playing f5, I think it's even a less better idea. Normally what happens is that after f4, black takes. Takes, 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 takes. And now seeks a way to get the knight to somehow to e5, usually by playing h6. Oops, wait, sorry, sorry, what's this going on? Okay, here. By playing something like h6, g5, knight g6, and establishing control over the e5 square. So, uh, therefore, okay, I'm surprised at, at, uh, at the reaction of f5. So, f takes e5, bishop takes e5, bishop h6, rook f7, queen d2, and now c5. Okay, trying to control the d4 square, now g4. Ah, this is definitely very sharp f takes g4, take on f7, check, knight f6, bishop f4, and this was the position I saw in the playing hole, and now knight g8. So, reinforcing that knight which is also pinned on the, on the uh, f file. Now some ideas that come to mind, let's take and push maybe d6 and go knight d5. I think white should definitely take on e5 as that uh, just uh, creates a weak pawn on e5 which can maybe be used looks very suspicious for black yeah. very and also very dangerous and I want to check this reaction in fact I just want to check the reaction because I haven't seen it before so bishop d3, knight g2, knight c6, castles and knight h5 d 597 okay and move 10 f4 yeah it has been played only nine times and the results are pretty depressing for white scoring not even 40 percent so that means that the move likely is not that great but mm. ah but this is strange yeah maybe this is actually the secret as Miljanic actually had a game like this after f4 in 2001 so 22 years ago against Andrei Florian and he did play f5 there too only that this time uh, white played better in that game, e5, bishop f5 was played, and eventually black won. So maybe this was a, just a targeted preparation uh, for 
for this game by, by Ortega. And in fact, I mean, I'm just checking now, the engine actually quite likes F4 for white. So, maybe it's not that bad. Maybe just my... Um, maybe it was just good preparation by Ortega, I ca can't say, yeah. Okay. You learn something new every day. Okay, so... Uh, Okay, looks good for Italy on board 3, on board 1, Godena has a normal position, what's going on on board 4? Okay, the French developed as <coughs> we expected, after Bishop D3 castle, White decided to castle short. So F5, takes, takes, knight E5, another normal move is the move G3, and just defending the pawn. And I remember, I have looked at this long time ago, and I have played it also with white. I remember the key here was in some lines that cd3 should be played. Not queen d3, but cd3. And then the pawn can help in restricting and fixing that pawn on e6. Also rook a1, and knight e5, and so on. Playing for a good knight, bad bishop. Knight e5 immediately. Uh, well, if I mean, if this just works tactically because normally uh, normally uh, white does not want to end up with a pawn on e5 but here let's say queen goes back uh, I'm not sure if white has in I mean uh, enough tactical chances or some dynamism to to justify this pawn on e5 which is quite lonesome there and can become very weak okay I mean yeah okay they, they can take go with the queen go back to f1 and queen e7 but then what I don't see anything concrete like just go bishop e7 on the other hand maybe it's not that easy to attack that pawn for now but long term it may be a problem so Still, uh, black decided to go g6, rook a e1, now in f95, rook e5 will happen, bishop d7, rook f3, rook a d8, queen f2, some maneuvering, b6, h4. h4 looks a bit out of place. Maybe introducing h5 ideas, but it's like, I don't know, strange. Bishop e8. So now there are no h5 ideas because white, black will just take. Oh, we are in for a typical maneuvering French battle here. Now let's move on to the next match. So, I mean, as, as things are, it looks promising for the Italians. They have an advantage on board. Oops, sorry. Uh, here. Advantage in the Rook end game on board one. Whether they will manage to uh, convert or not, we will see. On board 2, f4 was played finally, and this may lead to some massive simplifications after exchanges on f4, so it's balanced. Uh, Ortega has, okay, he took on e5 and played queen g5, attacking the pawn, queen e7 played, okay. Looks very promising for white. I don't know if d6 now and something like knight d5 is working or not. Definitely a, an idea to check. And uh, so promising and on, on board four is the only board where Montenegro is putting some pressure at least a bit so let's check the English team against China's women uh, we left off after h5 b3 was played by white um, just an empty move basically without really an idea and somewhat weakening the knight on c3 so h4 knight c2 c5 so there you go black systematically advancing with the pawns 
knight f5, the only square. Rook e8 now, threatening bishop f5 to win a piece. And all of a sudden, white is in some sort of a of a trouble because even if the bishop moves, bishop f5 takes only one, and then these pawns are vulnerable. Because okay, g6 will hang, but the pawns will be vulnerable. So g4, untempted by white, but after hg, knight g3, the structure has been broken here on the king side. At least white got to connect the pawns. Now knight e5. Perhaps g6 is an idea. Bishop f4 and c4. We see another drawback of b3. Black gets to undouble his pawns and obtain actually a majority that can create a passed pawn. So rook d5, knight g6. Rook knight was attacked. Bishop e3, take on b3, c, b, c, b, bishop c6, rook d2, and now knight e5. Oh, the knight is quite good. On e5, knight d4, bishop drops back, rook c2, king b8, bishop f4, g6, intending just bishop g7. I mean, for now, white has pretty solid central presence. You know, as they say in, in, in so Russian Soviet literature, who has the bishops has the future, you know, and the future belongs to him or her. So, and now White even decides to give up the other bishop. Bishop e5, rook e5, rook fc1 to win a tempo to attack this pawn. Yeah, but bishop h6, rook d1, rook e7. So, some maneuvering where obviously Black is doing great with a pair of bishops. So it's probably just a, a matter of consolidating a little bit before stepping uh, forward. So bishop f4 makes sense. Yeah. And there is also a check on e3 perhaps. So this looks pretty good for Adams. M's against Chun Hong Ning. So the fourth Knox was erected after around here. White started h4, so black decided okay, there's nothing more to do. Take take place c6. h5, queen c7, c4. Uh, one of the uh, useful things I read in, in Tivyakov's book Rock Solid Chess is that in these structures, Karo Khan structures, yeah that can arise also from the Scandinavian and so on. White should only play c4 as long as the pawn on d4 is well protected and cannot be attacked by black. Here both are both factors are, are fulfilled, so c4 is, is good. Otherwise, if they are not, white should stick to c3 and have the d4, square, d4 pawn well protected. But here it, this is okay because white's black species are far from well being placed to attack the d4 pawn and the bishop is here to support it additionally uh, it allows for some d5 tactical ideas based on the opening of the long diagonal bishop d6 played knight e4 knight e4 rook e4 knight f6 rook e2 so h6 ideas are always in the air to weaken the long diagonal then some d5 and can quickly become dangerous for black but that will probably be preceded by just doubling on the e-file and some pawn storm is also not out of the question, g4, g5, since uh, and the center is pretty stable. So again, another promising position for England. We actually have a draw on board 3, so Yunguo, Rook, Fleer, and uh, we left off here somewhere, knight g4, queen e2. And it's funny, I mean, to, funny but not surprising that the automatic analysis that I get here uh, suggests the move d5 you know stunning move that pawn can be taken three times with three different pieces yet it's fully in accordance with the uh, let's say rule that we know that uh, whenever you have lead in development and your opponent's king is stuck in the center you should open the game and after cd5, knight d4, queen d3, c5, it appears that black has good compensation. But d6 was somewhat natural. 
white castle long and Fleur went for f5. This is what I was wondering about, whether he'll go for that or just a more positional play. He went to f5, h3, knight f6, takes, takes, g4, bishop, g6, f4. So it's pretty sharp, but threatening f5, though uh, white is still kind of lagging back in development. So knight d4 played, queen g2, and c5. That knight is pretty annoying there. f5 makes sense to shut this diagonal. So bishop goes back to e8 and is rerouted to c6, g5. Funny how white plays with total neglect of development, but very concrete. Bishop c6, knight d5, knight d5, c d5, bishop a4. And now f6. Okay, this is, well, uh, computer indicates it's a huge mistake. So bishop takes d1, f takes e7, queen takes e7, king d1. So uh, white got two pieces for a rook and a pawn, but still no development and the king is rather weak. And here Fleer continues with the, actually a nice combination, but then again it looks like he's winning the game. Why does it say it was a draw? Let's see, rook f1, queen f1, queen e4. This was the position I saw. In the playing hole, it looked kind of winning to me. Rook h2 played, queen c2, king e1, queen b1, queen h. Okay, this is not a draw. I mean, this is just white resigned. <laughs> so, Fleer won. Not a draw. So, even better for the English team who are now basically guaranteed to win the match. Board 4, Davis against Yan Feng An. Uh, we had the position after bishop f4, knight h5. Bishop is annoying there, bishop e3, a4, a4. Not always a great idea because after b4 the knight knight was stable on c5, now it has to move. Knight e6, rook c1, takes on d4 and f5. Still, uh, I mean it's a, it's a mm, standard break, uh, but it's also weakening to the, the king side. Takes on g7, queen d2. Bishop e6, a f5, knight f5, knight e4. Knight e4, okay. Bishop c4. So the trick is if rook c4, d5. So g4 was played. Knight h4, g5, threatening knight f6, and king f8. This also looks extremely dodgy for, for black. Knight f6 is possible, and uh, rook c4 always is an idea. So it's uh, it just looks pretty bad for black, I think. Uh, okay, so judging from the positions, England is set for a, for a big win against Chinese. And the, the, the team from China. So in the fourth board, okay, the sacrifice that Dishman made on move 10. We saw this position after d4. Black played h6, probably stopping some ideas like knight g5 or bishop g5. This doesn't help the development though, so dc5, dc5, knight e5. Okay, d6, knight c6, ideas like that, rook d8. Now bishop b2. So white's compensation is long term. Uh, it appears that I underestimated it at the beginning and now it becomes clear that uh, white calmly finishes development whereas black is completely tied up and cannot do the same. So black is basically playing without a bishop, without a rook and this tied knight and, and a king in the center. So h5 now. Queen e2, rook d6, a4, b4, a5, queen c7. Okay, this doesn't really matter because the game should be somehow decided in the center and, and with that king. Though uh, some direct way should be somehow found. Knight d3 played. I guess intending bishop e5. King d8, bishop e5. Knight d7 takes, takes. Bishop h3 and g6. So white got... I mean, now 
which has a rook and a pawn for two pieces. Uh, on the other hand, black seemed to somewhat untangle. So the king is no longer pinned, bishop g7 can happen. So, uh, still looks good for white, though I think he should be looking for some concrete and direct ways, because if black is allowed to consolidate even more, maybe bishop g7, maybe rook e8, maybe f5 to cut off this bishop, I don't know. Uh, then he may start, start to wiggle out, but still looks very, very good for white here. So a surprise for the favorites. Let's see how they're doing on the other boards. Hjartarsson against Lewis and, uh, well, the, Benon, uh, the Benko perhaps did not turn out that badly for black as he cleaned up the queen side, got the pawn back and now, I mean, doesn't look... I mean, the last move was bishop f1 mm. I mean, critical would have been to take that pawn, no? but maybe he was worried about something like this, queen d4, then these ideas are coming so bishop f1 was played but now it looks definitely good for for black, yeah, some queen before, queen a3, defending the pawn and uh, definitely black's rooks are more active here, so I don't think black risks losing here so another good game for England 2 against Iceland let's see further Clark against Arnason. we had that uh, queen's gambit accepted and uh, black seems to be doing okay here as it appears that white didn't manage to do much with what looked like a promising start of the middle game now the end game looks equalish the bishop is passive as this is pretty good barrier against it but the active rook compensates for this yeah so maybe some check and then exchange queens and then uh, attack the knight and so on so this is around equal here yeah. on board four it looks like white already won or is winning at least that's what it appears the threat is obviously made and not only made but also to pick up the rook so what happened here how did white manage to create this uh, winning attack so we had uh, this position, yeah, d, d, knight c5, queen h4 was played, takes on g5, okay, h6, knight e4, take on e4, take on c4, now knight b4, and the knight is pretty far actually, this is the problem, yeah, rook a, e1, so with a pretty brutal threat of this. So this is how white created the attack, so all his pieces ended up on the king side, whereas black's pieces ended up elsewhere, on the queen side. So this was not, I mean, black was imprecise in dealing with the transition. Knight d3, knight f6, check, king h8, rook e3, rook d8, queen e4, threatening mate, gf6, queen h4 now. Not taking the knight but going for mate now e f6 queen h6 rook g3 everything is coming knight e5 queen f6 check king g8 rook e5 and this looks hopeless already take on c4 take on h6 threatening mate rook d5 rook e3 rook d4 rook h3 and probably black is resigning here so i mean <laughs> 1 nil for, for Iceland, but things are not looking that great on the other boards. So, I mean, Olafsson is likely lost against Dishman, even though the position remains complicated. Hjartarsson has no advantage whatsoever in a simplified position against Lewis, and Clark against Arnason is also Jewish, so it's, uh, it's hard to. I mean, if, perhaps it's, if, if Olofsson doesn't lose, then they win minimally. But it's a tall order. So maybe, okay, England won putting a great fight to help their compatriots from the first team. Okay, that may be the intrigue in the 
in the event as on as both USA and England and Italy seem to be winning their matches and uh, that may solve the issue of third place because England and Iceland share third and if Iceland don't win then England wins third and uh, well tiebreaker for first is well the most likely option here uh, King Jade was a bad move uh, in which game are we talking about here? So maybe here, if you're referring to this, maybe King H7, but I don't know. Stabbings, yeah. But I don't know, this is survivable. I mean, okay, King H7 phew, looks very, very, very suspicious. I mean,. I don't know, okay, just even taking the, the knight, but there is also rook h3. Looks very, very difficult to, to survive. Yeah, probably it was better than king g8. One screen, okay, maybe it's one, but, but still. Okay, yeah, yeah, most likely a king g8 just lost and king h7 was more resilient. Be that as it may, it's just the winning for Iceland. So let's move to S65. What do we have here? Okay, let's start from board one. Whoa, the Polish defense didn't work out so well for for Black. He's totally, completely, and absolutely busted here. Massive pawn on a six and the knight and like I, I mean I think the probably the only good thing you can say about Black's position is that he, that he has an equal material for now, but this is just okay, just one zero, yeah. Uh, board two, Werner against Meister. It was this strange stone wall and it became even stranger. So Black started attacking, Knight planted the Knight on c5. On the other hand, Black obtained this f5 square. This is pretty double-edged, it looks to me. Looks pretty double-edged. Thing is Black has a lot of pieces on the king side, that means that his king is safe, especially if there are no pawn breaks, f5 is well controlled. On the other hand, these means on the these pieces on the king side mean that black cannot support any activity on the queen side. So any b4 or anything, just uh, it's harmless because it cannot be supported by pieces. Therefore, it's that's why I think it's kind of balanced. Let's see what Kalinchev is doing. Whoa, Kalinchev. This is something. What is this? Does black win or is it just a draw? Check. What happened though? I'm not sure. I saw actually a rook end game, which was, let's see. Yeah, this was the position I saw when I was in the playing hall. White is a pawn up, but black is active and I expected this to be a draw. So what happened was check, check, and taking pawns, king b5, though, uh, and uh, the problem for, for white is that this pawn is very strong. So rook c7 cutting off the king, rook e4, king f2, d3, rook c1, king b4, king f3, rook goes back, h4, d2, rook d1, King c3, g4, rook c2, takes, takes, g5, and check. So, okay, white goes somewhere, to g4 most likely, to defend the pawns, king e3, g6. Uh, and then what? King e4, h5, king e5, king g5. Rook f1, and sh that's probably just a draw. Okay, this should be a draw at least from this line I calculated, sort of. So finally, Kaifer stops 
Kalinchev uh, to a second draw. So this is a draw and on board four, whoa, the, the King's Indian, we were looking at knight b6 was played, knight d2, normal maneuver for the knight, bishop f6, intending to exchange bishops, and now knight b3. I was never too keen on this knight d b3 move. Whenever I, I played knight d2 in these King's Indians was to strengthen the center and in case of taking on f5 to plant that knight on e4. Mm. and perhaps was not I mean, uh, required in this position to play knight d2 because there is no immediate need for it and black immediately took advantage of that by exchanging his passive bishop so knight b3, bishop g5, queen d2, takes takes, a4 knight goes back, knight c5, bishop c2, king g7 this already looks ok for black because he's, he's not going to play f5 now to open the position on the king side uh, as he has enough play on the queen side and he got rid of his bad bishop so positionally his position is not worse anymore because of that bishop so this is quite alright castles h6 well no need for that either but okay just bishop d7 was probably okay rook f1 knight d7 now well, okay, I don't know why. Why does black get the knight back to f6? h4, knight f6, f3, bishop d7, g5, knight h5. I'm not sure why it should have done this, because now the knight gets to f4. So... But maybe he can play knight e2, yeah? Obviously also covering g3. Maybe just knight e2. Okay, still un unclear, yeah? Unclear. But as the match stands, Germany should win and secure gold. Because they win on board 1. Board 2 is, un is, is unclear. Board 3 is a draw. Board 4 is unclear, so... Even if, they, let's say, they lose one of these three games, the others they shouldn't, and it would be a drawn match, and they still win. So Germany is well on course to secure first place. Let's see how the English are doing. John Nunn doing an attacking. So we saw this position after e5, yeah? So knight b3 was played, not touching anything in the center. Castles and f5. So he take on e3, and then take on f5 take on f5 and now king h8 I suppose if bishop f5 then let's rook f3 and then take on f6 I guess uh, so black played, played king h8 rook g3 queen c7 queen h4 check on b6 king h1 knight g5 and queen h6 White is piling up on the king side, though I don't think he can do much with the knight so far away from the from the king side. But uh, but the threat is h4, yeah. So how does what does Blank do? I don't know. I mean, he can't go rook g8 because f6 is falling. And in view that the black clock shows zeros, that means that he resigned. Okay. So, white managed to win the game just with a queen and a rook with all these knights on the queen side. But black messed up something badly because I don't think he was that, he had a bad position. A huge win for England because, well, they, they needed it. And good that, well, John Nunn ends the event with a win. So 1 0 for England. Board 2 also was winning, but here we had this position after rook d3, which looked actually not this rook d3, the previous one, yeah, when they exchanged queens. Rook f3 was played. Rook d8, keeping the blockade on d3. That's more important than the pawn on h3 b4 trying somehow to get 
break free, bishop a7, knight a3. Knight f5 takes on d3, knight c4. Okay, maybe some trying to patch up things, but not really, that doesn't even work, you'll just lose a piece. I mean, sorry, a pawn. And then maybe others, but okay, rook g3 check, king f1, rook h3. Now king e2. Uh, problem is that d4 would be great, but it doesn't work because now everything collapses. Yeah, just... So, king e2, knight g3 check, king f3, knight h5 check, king e4. I don't know if this was well. c5 now. I'm not sure if this putting the knight on h4 was such a great idea. On h5 such a great idea. c5 now. Problem is d d something. I mean d3 maybe, but d4 doesn't work because c3 is still hanging. So knight e3, cb cb rook h4. Okay, now taking a pawn, yeah. Knight d5, and now knight f4, knight f4, g5, and uh, winning another pawn. King f5, g4. Okay, this finished also and uh, black one so let's see how that happened where are we okay king okay uh, king f5 was played it says for some reason it's a blunder d4 was preferable and now gf4 being a blunder okay a lot of blunders and it's a natural move so rook f4 king g5 rook f2 Cutting of the king and just probably just getting to e6 and bishop d4 and so on should have been winning. Whereas after g4, it says that it's kind of equal now. Not because of d3 as playing in the game, but because of bishop b2. Okay, difficult to navigate these things. Obviously, very complicated. d3 was played, bishop d4, rook b1, rook h1. Okay, now ah, this is elementary actually. Okay, just d3 was awful. Yeah, so basically, he had to stop what happened in the game which was deadly pin along the first rank so that's why d3 was bad okay lack of prophylactic thinking yeah okay and then uh, just resigned yeah because he can never move 2-0 for England they are securing silver board 3 okay uh, bunker style yeah obviously black is on the more um, let's say uh, pleasant side of an, what looks like a deadlock so unfortunately this trick doesn't work rook h4 takes check and now not bishop here because of mate but queen g3 and and uh, well doesn't work so this will be a draw and on board four the Benoni has brought good dividends to black uh, normally when you see active play it suits black more currently pawn up that pawn is defended here yeah. so uh, good good prospects here for black so england are winning germany are winning or at least drawing and uh let's see what slovakia is doing okay we can check that Stachnik against Ljoki. advantage to Stachnik. clear advantage a pawn up so they are um, they are playing for a win obviously Rus plachetka here white is doing quite all right it's a very nice dominating knight and this is just probably just winning for white but that means that slovakia actually france will lead lunch against budra looks standard spanish stuff 
okay for both and on board four Gifar against Petran obviously black is an exchange up though certain compensation for white in view of that rook a8 play yeah? in view of that pawn on d6 but definitely uh, they are playing for oh hi yeah you want to join yeah. oh excellent excellent so we have a guest okay we started the day with nigel and now we will the tournament and we will finish the tournament with nigel welcome nigel hi hi good to see you again always good to see people winning games I'd have, I'd have come back sooner, but I didn't win. Yeah, <laughs> that, that would have been, yeah, that would have been nice, yeah. So, yeah, we, we were looking at this game, and, uh, yeah, just let me put this a bit, like, so it's better for the audio. And, uh, okay, I mean, you are winning the match, at least, yeah? Yeah, well, we, we, we want to win 4-0, ideally, because it helps our women's team. Your women's team, how yeah, does that help? Yeah, our women's team may have a chance if they win, uh -huh. uh, two and a half, one and a half, and we've beaten um, yes, the, Chinese. Uh, the Chinese ladies 4-0, yes. then I think our women's team can get gold. Wow, okay. No, no, you so were indirectly so we're, we're being helping. very gallant. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're indirectly helping your, your ladies, yeah? Mm. But you're also improving your chances if you win 4-0, then maybe your tiebreak gets better for everyone. Well, it, 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 it's, it's mathematically possible that we get some kind of medal, but yes. uh, I think it's, it's mathematically possible we can win, win gold. <laughs> but oh, <laughs> we need a lot of very yeah. strange results to happen. Theoretically, yeah. Yeah. As things stand now, I mean, your, your second team is putting a really good resistance against Iceland. Uh -huh. So, I mean, we, we will check the games, but... Uh, as things stand now, I think USA will win. Italy has good chances to win, so they will share first and second. Mm -hmm. And you win, and then you're waiting if Iceland wins, so you share third, and then depends on tiebreak. But if yeah. Iceland doesn't win, then you're clear first, third, sorry. Yeah, so we get bronze. Yeah, so you get bronze it the, um, Yeah, well, it, you know, we, we were hoping for more, but we, we yeah. got some, um, uh, you know, we, did, we didn't do very well. Yeah, some, some matches, matches were, were yeah. dodgy a bit. Okay, let, let's check your game. Uh, so you chose the Fianchero uh, Kings Indian and up to somewhere here was Theory, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, and here um, I wasn't sure I could remember Queen Big 6. I think it's it still be. Theory. It should be. I, it should be Theory, but I was looking at then... Uh, I was checking it during the game and I, uh -huh. I was looking at Bishop takes D6. Right. And then um, if... If uh, yeah, four stuff, but I'm yeah, you not can't sure do that. So he plays. So, so she plays rook d8. Okay, e5. And then I was looking at e5. Yes. Knight e8. Yes. And then knight d b5. Okay. And I, I wasn't sure about What's this. What's going on? Yeah, if it takes knight d5, I suppose. Yeah. yeah. And the queen now must go somewhere ugly. And, now and then I can <laughs> <laughs> well, you can see why I wasn't sure. You know? Exactly, exactly, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Maybe, maybe I. Yeah, I don't yeah, know what I do. So I wasn't sure about Queen B six, but uh -huh. I, I thought it was all theory, so I, I assumed it was okay. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Right. And then, uh, and then I, I was checking Queen B six. Okay. I think and Knight H five helps me. Knight yeah, it does. Five, probably so, does. Probably does. Yeah. So, so Black has, to, and maybe instead of Knight H five, H six. That would be a uh, like a standard, here? a standard move. You know, H six. Yeah, I mean, I guess something Queen E seven is just probably as as well. Yeah, some some ideas like yeah, ninety seven, ninety five. Yeah, but then I probably go just Queen C two and Rook A D one. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Standard yeah. play. Um, yeah, yeah. Let's say Queen C two, Knight D seven, Rook yeah, D one, Rook A D one, Knight there. And uh, and this is uh, this position I like for White. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it looks, I, looks I have, pretty uh, good. I looks standard. Control. Yeah, looks standard. Yeah. Yeah, maybe you just draw back by four and so on. Yeah, yeah. Some king h two first. Yeah, maybe. yeah. Standard play. Yeah. yeah. But knight h five, yeah, I think it helped, and especially a four helped a lot because normally you that knight on c five is pretty good, and I think now just getting rid of it, it's really yeah. Works in your but, favor. but then I wasn't sure because uh -huh. black. Um, well, I think b four has to be played. Okay. And then after knight e six, I, I spent a long time looking at. Um, Queen D two, uh -huh. uh, uh, Rook 
Queen, I eventually chose rook c1. Rook c1. I looked at queen d2 as well. Okay. Which um, probably black is just taking on d4 again. Oh, everything, yeah. Yeah, and still, and still. Uh, but but then, but then f5 I can take. Um, right. So after rook c1. Okay. Then, uh, then when you can't, black, yeah. yeah, when black plays knight takes d4, bishop takes d4, f5 I yeah, can't, you can't take. can't take because yeah. check and you lose the, the, the yeah. bishop, yeah? So it, perhaps, perhaps queen d2 is better. But I'm not sure f5 is good for black because it just weakens the position so much, I think. Uh, yeah, it does. It looks, it it does, looks very but, promising for yeah, white. But, 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 you know, um, I think black has to do something to, to, to break the bind. Uh -huh, so f5 uh -huh. uh, makes, uh, uh -huh, makes some sense. So you so took, I think. I took, yeah. And just queen d2, yeah? Yeah. And now, again, I wasn't sure. I thought maybe queen f6. Yeah, queen f6 makes sense because, I mean, further kind of bishop e6 seems like, I don't know. I think black needs to somehow cover the dark squares in some way, yeah? Yeah, just and then I was thinking about um, some even f4. I f4, okay. Yeah. And then maybe bishop e6. Bishop, but d6 no it's not hanging or ah, d6 is hanging of course yeah. i mean maybe bishop yeah. c4 but then again it looks kind of dodgy yeah maybe just bishop d7 yeah now but um, this this looks rookie d1 yeah this looks looks uh, looks, looks, looks good looks, for me yeah, yeah it does it does yeah i my my feeling was that this must be good for white for some reason yeah. because it looks too loose for yeah yeah for, for black yeah so anyway, she played bishop e6 yeah. and found this ingenious um, bishop takes c4, which yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I, I, I sort of thought about it, uh -huh. uh, so takes, but takes. Um, I, I didn't take it very seriously. Uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> I, yeah. I should have taken it more seriously. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> so now, now g4 needs to be played. Yeah, g4, g5 was pretty good. I think I kind of like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. But then, uh, then I, I think she made a mistake in taking on g2. I think that. Aha, uh -huh, so this was played. Okay, yeah, so now. Um, Rook c4. Yeah. Yeah, so now not knight takes g2, the immediate d5. d5 immediately, yeah. But this again looks pretty loose. Maybe some queen c3. And yeah, yeah, it takes the rook, queen h8, check, king f7, queen takes h7, check, knight g7. What do you mean? Knight oh, G7? sorry, There's the no knight's knight. not gone, but knight, knight, knight to f5. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been great, yeah? Knight G7, yeah, knight yeah. G7. yeah, so queen, queen c3, three, C3, maybe knight f5. Uh -huh. Going back. I, uh, I was calculating this, then then she played the other move. Aha, uh -huh. uh, so you, while, the, well, while you were thinking, she played knight yeah, g yeah, 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 yeah. But I suppose maybe I can play knight c5. Can I play knight c5? Probably, yeah. Maybe and then good. if take. Uh, yeah, I mean you win material. I mean because of ninety six, no. Uh, queen I think. Yeah. Looks like. Well, I win material back. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, hang on, this isn't clear either because I'm, I'm, I'm. No, but you're D takes c four. No, I know you're not a rooker. I'm not a rooker. Okay, okay. D C four. I'm a piece down. Right, right. So, so hang on. Uh, no, you aren't yeah, maybe that's actually not, you, not you were right. a piece up, not a not a piece down, but yeah, I was yeah, I was but a piece here, up. But no. here, here looks so so suspicious. I don't know. I mean, yeah, it's uh, okay. Just give the check and see what happens. Yeah. Yeah, but G G five is hanging. But check and you win some rook or you don't win a rook. Uh, rook we're, we're sure about that, yeah. aren't we? No, we're not. Yeah. <laughs> we're not. <laughs> we're not no. With my yeah. That, you know, suddenly I can be in big trouble in a position like that. Yeah, if you don't have anything you know, against so the king, I, then I, so so I thought this was critical. And d, so d five immediately. Yeah, yeah d five straight away. And now and now and now. Can't you play rook d four maybe? To yeah, I can try that, and then queen. I, there's also there's queen also seven, yeah queen queen e seven. And uh, yeah, and queen e7. But then it still doesn't threaten to take. I mean, because then rook e4 attacks the queen. Yeah, the attacks knight. the knight. But it's threatening to take on g2 now. Yeah, that's why I was thinking maybe bishop h1, but it looks weird. Ah, it's not threatening that. Oh, it is. It is. It is, yeah. Because I have. Um, yeah, so I wasn't sure about this. Hmm. I somehow had the feeling that something should happen on that diagonal. 
Yeah, I thought something could happen not, on not, the not, diagonal, not sure but, how. but yeah, I wasn't sure how either. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Queen. Queen C three. Yeah, Queen C three. Knight F five. Knight F five, yeah. and then and, and then. And then okay, just maybe check. King escapes. Yeah, I was looking at this knight as well. Check. Knight G now, seven. And now there's a threat to trap my queen yeah. with rook H eight. Yeah. So I don't so know I what what happens. Here. Ah, but 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 maybe I have a way to escape from that. Uh, you can go Queen H four, but maybe it's not the best thing to do. We can also maybe. Hmm. Not sure this is getting. Yeah, it, it suddenly gets very messy. Yeah, yeah. So. Hmm. Okay, so basically this is sort of critical, yeah? Yeah. So what? Knight f6 takes takes no that doesn't work. Ah, so if I go rook c5, okay, takes and now I can take the knight somewhere, okay. can't I? No, but just with the queen, what can you make there? Uh, and I'm check. checking and taking the pawn check. Yeah, but maybe just run away. Yeah. Yeah, but I have a do I have a g pawn? G pawn. -pawn? Still, it's yeah, the very, the I can I can also take b7. It looks. Yeah, I mean, or, or, or take f five. I take f five, don't I? No, it goes to e six. No, or maybe then bishop before. Okay. Yeah, bishop b four. Okay, may, maybe this is. Yep. Maybe this is good. Yeah. Yeah, maybe, maybe that's G6, good. Rook c five and take take on f five. I might have seen that during the game. Maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> no, but then, then I mean, if this happens d five, you just yeah. start calculating here. You have yeah, the yeah, options yeah, and you yeah, start calculating yeah, yeah. in the. Yeah. But after knight g two, okay. King yeah, G2, now D5, now I think it's winning because I, I just yeah. rook d four, yeah, and queen then queen seven check king g seven. So I can play I, I can play just rook e d one now as well. Oh ah, yeah, yeah, uh, you win the queen. The, yeah. I have the yes, pin. Yes. But uh, knight d six is uh, is yeah. uh, showing off a bit. Yeah, yeah. and you, you you just deliver it. Yeah, that's yeah, nice yeah. nice conclusion though. Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. So, uh, yeah, you rounded up with a nice game. You started with a nice game. Yeah, and then I, I trudged it. along with a, a series of draws. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and my horrible queen's gambit made a showing. I, I hope you saw that. And I had a yeah, horrible position where that, yeah. my opponent accepted a draw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, but uh, uh, actually, when I was commenting on that game online, I was kind of wondering because. You remember the first day you said you feel more comfortable when you have the initiative with like Benoni and stuff, and then you go for the Queen's yeah, game. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, thinking, well, okay, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Maybe it's you want I mean, to the, it. the, 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 I, I, I was wondering all day what I would play against oh. him, and I had like okay. seven ideas, something like this. And <laughs> I asked my the advice of my teammates, and they said play this and don't play the Nimzo because uh -huh. he plays the Nimzo in both colours. Uh -huh. And you know, so I was mulling this over, and then uh -huh. I thought, well, I won't play the Benoni. And then um, I, I thought he would play d4, knight f3, and g3, uh -huh, maybe, uh -huh, uh -huh. Which, um, uh, which he was going to play. Right. And I had something good against that. Okay. Right. So I had all these ideas, and then eventually, you know, what's happened is I, I played this stupid Queen's Gambit with h6 again. Why? <laughs> well, <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I just I just taught myself out of everything, you know. Ah. I, I taught myself out of everything good, and in the end, did something that wasn't so good. I mean, it's not that no. bad. I mean, though it's kind of too solid, perhaps. Or well, I had a game in Banasque where I actually played it better for Black. I didn't advance uh -huh. the queenside pawns, uh -huh, uh -huh. and I kept them on uh, a seven and b six. Okay. And that is a better thing to do because uh -huh. when you advance the queenside pawns, you just make more weaknesses. Right. right. So in that game, I had a, again a miserable position. I offered a draw, uh -huh. but it was miserable. But more, it was better than uh, this, yeah. than this one. So when you advance the queenside pawns, you just make weaknesses. Uh -huh. you know? So I, I don't know. I, I don't know what happened. You know. I should have played a Bononi. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it worked well. <laughs> Normally, you know, that there was this advice by Capablanca. He said something like, if your opening is giving you good results, you should continue to play it, even if the positions you're getting are maybe not... Oh, right. Always, he said always. that. Yeah, he said that, something right. like that. Okay. I, I haven't been able to... I mean, the source, I don't remember it, but he, I have read that, that he has said okay. this. So you should just stick to the openings that bring good results. So... 
Well, yeah, well, I, I should have done. I should have done something like that. Some, just anything, you know. Uh, any of the other six ideas. Any that you had, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I remember this. Th th this was actually Kasparov's problem when he was preparing for games, and he had too many ideas, yeah. and he couldn't decide which one to use. You know, in, in that particular game. Yeah, but then he didn't use a bad one. Even his, <laughs> even his <laughs> worst <laughs> one was pretty was good. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm pretty sure that was the case. Yeah. 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 So what can you say for as conclusion? Okay, you, the tournament's finished. So uh, well, we, we we're waiting results, you know. So uh -huh. so I, I don't know. I mean, it would be very nice if we. Um, uh, th this game was a draw. No, no, it's not. It's, it's just not. A it was a win because for, it was a win for black. Yeah, it was yeah. a win for black. Yes, I, yes, yeah. yes. It's just so, a mistake here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah um, well, you know, it's uh, it, it was very quiet. We could only do chess, and we we oh. ate dinner together. Uh -huh, you know, uh -huh. so our team always had breakfast, lunch, and dinner together. Oh, nice! That's you know, team spirit. And, yeah, yeah. And the 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 captain uh, John Ems was very good, oh. I have to say. Yeah, I know uh, him from the foreign. We yeah, actually yeah. play on the same team on the foreign seal for, yeah. for white rose. And it, he's a he's an excellent captain, uh -huh. and you know, it's uh, been a you know been a nice time. Oh, you enjoyed you know, it, yeah. Hopefully, hopefully we can win something. Hopefully we got like a bronze medal or something. Yeah, that would be that would be good. But be, is yeah. this your first time playing the senior? Uh, yeah, team? it's my it's my second ever senior event. Oh really? I, I I I wasn't going to do it. I, uh -huh. I was thinking, no, I can play these kids. <laughs> <laughs> I like the optimism. Yeah, I like the optimism. <laughs> you know, but I've had second thoughts about that. You know, uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> you know, uh -huh. to playing a lot of Spanish juniors. You know, they uh, they they're, they're pretty good. So uh -huh. you know. Yeah, I think I'm going to play more senior events. Ah. I'll still play some Spanish That's juniors obvious. from from Obviously, time to when time. You, when you play there, you, it's an unavoidable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. But I, I, I like the uh, I like the events, and you get to see people you haven't seen yeah, yeah. for like 30 years or something. Oh. You know, so yeah, now uh, they are coming back. It's for senior events. They maybe had careers outside of chess. Yeah, and now maybe coming back to 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 chess again. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's, so it's, it's, it's nice. fun. It's yeah. Nice. Nigel, thank you. Okay, thank yeah, you very much. It was and, a pleasure. Uh, well, good luck thanks, yeah, with the you, rest of the commentary. Yeah, well, thanks, thanks. Yeah, I'll, I'll <laughs> be another I'll hour be or two, I guess. Probably, yeah. yeah, yeah, probably something like this. So yeah, we'll be watching the games. Probably I'll have a short break now, and then I come yeah. back for the for the final time trouble phase and, and ah, okay. the, the, the results. Okay. Good luck to your team. Right. Yeah, thank you. and yeah, I'll see you around here. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Thank okay. you. Yeah. Cheers. Yeah. Okay, Nigel Davis, ladies and gentlemen, won a very nice game in the Fianchetto Kings Indian, so 2-0 uh, for England, and uh, as he said, they are expecting to win 4-0, which I didn't know about this, uh, is an indirect way, actually maybe even a direct way to help the English ladies to surpass the Chinese team here. So I'll have a quick view at the comments, well, uh, okay, quite a few of it, then just uh, to check. Okay, table based draw in Kalinchev. Yeah, that was expected to be a draw, but I haven't checked it. Um, yeah, yeah, like I said, Kevin, England are uh, just uh, winning their match, and they first and foremost they hope Iceland doesn't win, and then they are clear third. If Iceland wins, then it will depend on tiebreak. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, Nigel. Uh, just mentioned that he this is his second senior event so and he likes it and the um, as he said he will likely play more of these events so it's uh, well that sounds good um, so okay so I will I will take a short break now and uh, yeah then I'll be back for the uh, for the decisive phases of the games. See you shortly.
Hai de puște! Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the live coverage of the last round of the World Senior Team Championship. Another guest in the studio, we have Natasha Regan. Hello, Natasha. Hello, Alex. Good to see you. Uh, we haven't covered the, the games of the uh, women English team, but as I understood, uh, they stand a chance of actually winning gold here, depending on their result, because their men's team, they did the job ideally by beating the uh, Chinese women team by 4-0. And now you basically need to win your match. We need to win a match. So we are playing Finland today. Right. Um, and so on paper, we're a little bit higher rated. So right. we're, we're kind of favorites. Um, and well, so I, I, I won my game. Oh, congratulations. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> Thank you. So we need to get two and a half to right. win the women's. Um, and we were better on all four boards. Right. Um, but it's taken a bit of a turn, so it's it's all up for grabs at the moment. So we've got on board one, Susan was the exchange yes. up. She's given back the exchange right. to be a pawn up in a rook and pawn ending. Mm -hmm. But we know rook and pawn endings and are, are all tricky draws. Things, yes. so are you by any chance yeah. playing on the live boards? Yes, we're on the live that's boards, uh, so yeah, we can get it up. Uh, well, let's see, because... Check, yeah. um, so it's down there. there you are. A few okay, so minutes ago. So this is... Going? Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. So, so I asked um, John Nunn, and he thought this was a drawn end game. Should be a draw, though, but you never know. But you never know. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> but you never know, exactly. And so know. Susan does have the extra pawn, so that's mm -hmm, mm -hmm. good. Um, okay. Board two, board unfortunately, two. I think Sheila lost her queen. Oh, yeah, this is probably... Um, so off. this one's looking not, not good. so good. Um, just and looks then, losing. well, yeah, yeah, and um, board three, Ingrid. Yeah. When I saw it, she was a pawn up, but it's a little bit tricky. Yeah, it's tricky because the uh, king issues with the king. Yeah, right? yeah, and we need to get. Even so though maybe knight e five is possible to guard against knight g four. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She so should do then that. Then queen c two. It, 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 it's sharp. Yeah. Because white needs to take care of that king at all times. Yeah. Yes, and in good, it's a little bit low on time. Yeah, that that that's probably an also an important factor. Yeah. Hmm. And you need actually fifty percent score from these three games to to win the match. Exactly. And we, if we say we lose, so, on yeah, so lose on two, which on is looking two? tricky. Um, then we hmm. need one and a half out of our two wipes. I mean, on the positive side, on both boards, you're pressing, yeah. you're trying to play for a win, so maybe yeah. just one happens that it turns out it's yeah. into a win. Yeah. But it's not going to be easy. No, it's, it's yes, yeah. the men did the job, and now we've just got yeah. to make sure we win exactly. this match. Exactly, exactly. Yes, so we will see. So there is one thing, actually, I mean, just to inform the viewers, if, I mean, if they know that Natasha is an author of two amazing books, one that I have read and one that I am currently reading, <laughs> Uh, the one I've read is Chess for Life, and yeah. um, the one I'm reading now is Game Changer. Both of them written together with the Grandmaster Matthew Sadler. Um, I mentioned Chess for Life in one of our previous commentaries, and I think it's quite appropriate to talk with Natasha yeah. about how, I mean, uh, Chess for Life, obviously, the, the book is about uh, players who have been successful for many years, and they have continued their su success even their, let's say, senior years. And um, the book is comprised of many interviews with uh, these type of players. And um, for example, we had John Nunn here yeah. and uh, Keith Arkell. We didn't have him because I don't think he won a game and he didn't want to come otherwise. So that was a bit unfortunate. I was actually going, looking forward to, to talking to him. But okay, we have Natasha. So yeah. uh, what were your exper experiences after talking to these people and, and um, these players and they're sharing their advice how you should play in let's say in advanced well it was years. very very interesting speaking to all the different players mm -hmm. and their different takes on the game and actually several of them are here um, yeah. at this tournament so there was also a very interesting interview was with Terry Chapman right Terry um, Chapman, yes, and yes. so he was a very successful businessman yes. um, and had played chess as a kid then stopped for his career and then took it up again yes. and he made a um, a, a very kind of rigorous program mm -hmm. studying all sorts of different aspects of chess so right. the psychological side the openings um, the end games and, yes. and all sorts of things and he's 
here um, this week playing very well actually yes, in the yes. over 65s yes, yes. Um, and there's also Ingrid Lauterbach who right. also she's now the president of the German Chess Federation but she also had a, a very good career so where does she well. live by the way she uh, she's played for England she used to live in England but she's now living in Germany ah, so that's why she so okay, that's why okay, she's okay. president of the nice, German nice. Federation yeah um, and so actually in fact it's her game that's on the showing on the board yeah um, yeah she, exactly she's trying now. to yeah, yeah. so she's I w- trying I was to go- I wanted to ask you one thing mm. uh, and I asked this one of our guests or I was just talking about this I don't remember uh, there is actually a conflicting advice mm. uh, when it comes to what you should do as years advance. I remember the reading uh, Botwinik's advice that when he said that as the player ages, yeah. he should actually be able to reprogram himself in order to be successful with advancing age. Yeah. What he meant mostly was that uh, probably there should be some uh, change in the style of play, maybe in the repertoire, perhaps relying less on calculation and tactics, relying more on understanding, feeling, intuition and mm. so on. So this was one advice. I understand that he probably gave this advice to players who wanted to play just generally on a, yeah. on a, on, 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 I mean, on the, against people in general, not seniors. Exactly. So with seniors, you can play and how you like. Exactly. You and and then we like have John Nunn's advice yes. from the book when yeah. he said, you shouldn't really change anything. Yeah. You should just stick to your strengths. Yeah. yeah. And what made you a good player will continue to give you good results when you play seniors. Mm. So how do you see these, these, uh, two opinions well it, it does depend what you play so if you're mm-hmm. playing seniors just play however you really ah, like right. to play <laughs> um, in terms of tactics I think you can still be good as tactics as a senior but you mm-hmm. do you know you, you probably your calculation slows yeah, down a little bit not, in honesty yeah, yeah, right. um, but still practicing tactics is, is um, still very very helpful mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and repertoire I mean quite a lot of people do change repertoire mm-hmm. and they do move bit more towards the sort of knight f3 choir I've done it myself study. but ah, yeah. move, move, <laughs> move towards that stuff but actually when you play in the seniors tournament you can go back to your old stuff and there's you, uh-huh. you sometimes see these oh. openings from long ago, yeah, from long ago. Yeah. what I've noticed in fact here was uh, that at least to my mind as I was looking at the games commenting and so on I somehow think that the main uh, let's say, weakness or or problem with senior players is consistency. Mm. Because as the tournament progresses, what I noticed were we were having more quick draws and more blunders. Yeah, there's definitely some blunders. You can expect some some blunders blunders in the senior tournament. Um, but also there's some, some good games. And actually, I'm, I'm just to talk about my own games because I'm right, right, sure, sure. But I played a really nice game actually in the first the first game I played here. You mean yeah. here? Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, and so you can still play. Still oh, absolutely. Still play some good, I mean, but as you say, consistency. So consistency. you wouldn't necessarily play um, blunder free for the whole tournament. Exactly. But then that doesn't matter really. Doesn't matter. Yeah, because <laughs> so, everybody's yeah. blundering. Because right? everybody is <laughs> doing it. Yeah. 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 So. Yeah, okay. Yeah. But we've been, I'll tell you what's really nice, uh-huh. actually, um, is the atmosphere. Um, in that, um, when I'm playing normal tournaments, right. people, when you finish, you normally just go back to your room and, and don't. Right. But here, we've all been going through, very social, as, yeah. like as a team, very social, going through everybody's games. Oh. Learning, no, you learn a lot. Right. Um, and so we've got like, um, we've got three open over 50s teams and a women over 50s and two right. over 65 teams. So we've got a lot of teams and we're, you know, like the, the everybody's going through each other's games. Oh, that, that's really no, nice. No, it's actually. really, really nice. That's yeah. actually nice. And, and you're right because, okay, I, I obviously I've played many open tournaments and in the, in the, let's say, 90s and maybe even early noughties, mm. this was common. Mm. Yeah, you yeah. finish the game, you maybe sit in the lounge of the hotel, you meet other players, mm. you socialize, you talk, maybe you look at the game, maybe play some blitz. Nowadays, that's pretty rare. Everybody yeah. runs to their rooms to keep, check the keep game. Keep the secrets. Keep the secrets, <laughs> check the game with an engine, and then yeah. no need to talk about the game. You know everything yeah. what happened. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. No, we're trying to do it before we've even looked on the engine. We're trying to go exactly. through it yeah, as a yeah. team. The, 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 and this yeah, is how is this, really this nice. helps tremendously, especially if a stronger player or a coach tells you, okay, maybe this, maybe that, some suggestions, some impressions from the side. I think this mm. is very helpful. 
Mm. And yeah, I'm pretty happy for your, your team because you're the biggest delegation here, I think you're the... Yeah, and we've been doing this for a little, you know, like the last two or three years. We Like last year in Aquaterme, ah, we right. also had uh-huh. several teams there. And oh, it's, nice, it actually nice. gives us, it's a really good buzz, you Great. know, just Great. Um, we travel together and then Fantastic, we yeah. just... Are you helped yeah. by the federation that you managed to... to well, to we've, got, um, we've got Nigel Povar yes. and Stuart Rubin are the right. sort of, um, uh, what it like... Not quite directors, but they're the senior. They're sort of responsible for senior chess okay, okay. in the UK. We don't particularly have funding, uh-huh. um, but we. But he, we do have um, sort of some people are sponsoring it, and uh-huh. um, sort of, and we also have like it's very well organised, and we, we sort of you know everybody who plays says they had a nice time, and yes. then you get more people uh-huh. playing. Um, so we have. In the UK, we have an English Championship and a British Championship for right. seniors. Right. Um, but then, then yeah, we get good lots of teams in the European teams, the world teams, and then we also have. I think John Nunn, he's the world champion, isn't yes. he, for the over sixty yes. fives, yes. yes. um, and and people playing the individuals events as well. So it's right. it's quite yeah, and okay, um, and like a lot of people are saying, yeah, it's 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 just a whole lot more fun than they were expecting. Yeah, and, exactly, and, exactly. Yeah. I think people are just kind of maybe even nostalgic. To, uh, yeah. I mean, f- when they used to play chess and had these very nice experiences, and they now get the chance to enjoy it again. Yeah, but especially. with with the top players, well, like you've got grandmasters. Exactly, exactly, exactly. You have players. like yeah. Yeah, Michael Adams is here and Michael John Nunn is here. Is they here. were top He's been ten playing players brilliantly. Top, yes. um, yeah, and 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 um, also the players like in the second and third team, they've been playing against grandmasters. Like exactly. the, they've been playing grandmasters today, and I think um, Steve Dishman just got a draw with a grandmaster. He was winning today. Was he winning as yeah, well? Yeah, he was. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I haven't checked. The game I, I will but he yeah. was winning so uh, yeah okay I'm just looking at the how's game. this how's yeah, this, how is yeah. this? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, looks looks promising at least because I don't see anything concrete she's got a pass b pawn yeah, exactly, that's what I would exactly. comment yeah, yeah that's, that's <laughs> definitely something yeah, yeah and, and the queen defends g3 so there are no direct attacks yeah 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 and she's got she's over the it looks like she's got 30 minutes again, so that's nice. Just a second. Uh, so she was playing on her original time because she had uh, She must have. I don't know how it works. Yeah. I've, I've only after. played a few games. I haven't ever got to the... I haven't got, <laughs> haven't got to 40 moves so yet. you're winning quickly then, yeah? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now if she got 30 minutes, then it... Okay, and Black got 50, so this was a fast game, obviously. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And what about board one? How's that? Okay, let's check, yeah. Board one. It's still yeah. the same. No, well, she's dropping this pawn now, oh. so... Not ideal. <laughs> Not ideal. No. Not ideal. No, I mean, she may even run some risks if she drops another one. So that's. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah, but this should be a draw. I mean. Uh, mm. Okay, maybe just come to f6, and then it should be some sort of a draw. Yeah. I mean, normally, okay, just to tell the viewers, yeah, something here, yeah. Normally, the plan is to get the pawn to a6. Rook to a8, and then try to get the king to the to the pawn. In the meantime, black collects one pawn at least mm-hmm. on the king side, and then sacrifices the rook and organizes enough counterplay here to force uh, like a king and pawn against rook endgame because the rook, the king is too far for white, and white is normally forced to sacrifice the rook for the pawn, and it, it, it should be a draw. This is the general scenario. But there have been many mishaps, and sometimes even yeah. one ha- white has lost some games by uh, going for going for for this this plan. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, so I mean, King D4 played, and now yeah, maybe here already it was difficult to save the pawn actually. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Maybe Rook D7 made some sense. As I mean, it's preferable. I mean, white could be winning, for example, putting rook on the third rank, playing g3, and that just the rook defends everything, right? Mm. And then just the king helps the pawn, and that's winning. Okay, yeah. But, I don't know if, I mean, rook d7, if it's just establishes that setup, uh, if it does, then it was definitely the best chance. Because, that's okay, good, now, how, yeah. do, how does black stop it? I mean, if check, just the rook comes back, yeah? And if rook uh, here, maybe it's first king b2 for now, and then start pushing, and, push and then rook can't just really stay here for long. When the rook moves, maybe g3 will happen, rook d3. So, pff, I don't know. I mean, it, I, I have a feeling that this was the better chance yeah. than king d3, because king d3, rook e1, 
now the king is in the way yeah it's neither supporting the pawn not defending his king side so it's kind of yeah. neither yeah. here nor there the king d4 was played and now that oh, and she can't played. defend. Yeah. King five okay, now. so she's going to try and deliver mate, but she might not manage it. <laughs> probably not. No, it'll probably just lead to to uh, exchanges and a draw. But okay, she's trying at least. Yeah. Mm. And uh, board two. Let's she see. Okay, it. this is just. Over I've written it off, maybe, but no, no, but yeah. it, is, it is. I mean, queen and, <laughs> and a knight, and then an additional extra pawn, and uh, just all sorts of threats. Knight f six. So just uh, I don't know. This is this is done. Yeah. So, so we need Ingrid. Oh, h5. h5. Okay, that's that's an idea to push h4, yeah? Yeah. To create some some play. In fact, well, it doesn't look too bad. Okay, probably some queen f3 should be played, attacking that one and the queen. Yeah. So, uh, I wouldn't write it off. I mean, if she gets the queens off, she should win. Oh, yeah, if the queens are off, it's winning. That's for sure. Yeah. So we still have a chance. Still have a chance. Still have a chance. Okay, yeah. exciting. Yeah. Cool. Uh, okay, well, Natasha, thank you. Thank I you. won't keep thank you for you long. Much. It was a pleasure. Yeah, lovely. I wish you good luck for the, for the rest of the thank games. Thank you. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I'll see you around. Yeah. See you. Thanks. Thanks thank you. Okay, so good luck to the English women. Yeah, they still have a chance to, to win their match, provided that Lauterbach wins this game and we an expected draw on, uh, on first board. And if they do, they, they are just, uh, well, women senior world champions. We can go back to our matches. Uh, okay, just uh, Enrique, hola Enrique. ¿Qué tal? ¿Todo bien, espero? Uh, so, uh, greetings for Berlin. Well, hello Sandra. Greetings for Berlin. Greetings from the Ochrit Lake. Um, oh, my Pova. Okay, so that means that he had a really great uh, experience in the in the Benoni. Okay, so let's go back checking the games. Okay, Shabalov actually beat Gdansky. So the board we had the position somewhere I think here more or less yeah this they were repeating rook f8 queen g3 bishop c8 now stopping f5 bishop d6 and now rook d6 standard exchange sacrifice very comfortable position for black full compensation as he has a pawn and also the bishops are doing quite a great job here d4 maybe d3 will later come yeah so rook e1 rook f8 exchanging avoiding the exchange f5 exchanging queens but uh, sacrificing that pawn so queen takes g3 hg bishop takes f5 bishop d5 now if bishop c2 okay so this was the trick if bishop c2 we, we already saw this trick in the De david game yeah so g6 first, still a pawn for the exchange and c2 is hanging, so rook e7, but I just find it really hard to believe how white lost this. So c3, king g7, king h2, bishop c5, rook b7, bishop d6, rook b6, rook d8, and now rook f5? Why did this happen? Rook f5, gf5, king h3 bishop c5 wow this was massive this was really literally a, a, a just a point given for free i mean i understand there is this threat of h6 but uh, take the pawn on on, on h6 a6 and then think even if black takes on g3 maybe he was worried about some mating threats hg bishop c5 and rook h8 but then you can take on f3 yeah it's really no risk whatsoever should have been a draw, yeah? Most likely. But just this panic, rook f5, and then losing even a piece. This was massive victory for USA, as this was the only board where Poland could hope to get at least on the scoreboard. So, board three, 
Novikov is three pawns up and uh, he will win so it will be a four nil Yermolinsky already won on board for so four nil for USA uh, I was already told that it's also four nil for England they all won their games and so let's see what the Italians are doing and David managed to convert the Rukan game congratulations very important win we saw this up to King e2 Rook a6 was played, Rook c3, c6, Rook b3. This is what I was talking about when these Rooks are very active along the ranks. They can attack the pawns. So b5, weakening, but for now, Black is defending the pawns, just that the Rook are pretty awful. Check, King f7, check, King g6, Rook e7. So now, making sure that the Rook cannot move from f6. And neither the, can the king because king f5 drops the pawn on g7. So b4, rook d3, king h6, rook d7. Yeah, it's winning already for white. Difference in activity and, uh, and harmony coordination is is the decisive factor. So king rook g6, g4, c5, h4, c4, king f2, c3 takes rook c6, trying to get some activity. C b a b, king g3, rook c3. Rook b7, e5, just trying to break free but just giving up too many pawns in the process. So check, rook g7, so he just basically lost everything. Rook c2, rook f4, rook takes, takes, okay, three pawns, a bit too much. So white won. Uh, let's see, board 2, Godena appears also winning. The rook moves and the pawn promotes. So that's 2 0 for Italy. Board 3. Oh, things got complicated here. And now it appears that black is winning. Wow, this is what's also a major turnaround. Looks like white had a winning attack, but now it's black winning. And uh, since the tie break. I was told that the first tie break is actually board points so the more uh, points the, uh, the team scores the better and this may be critical for the Italians as they uh, lost a full point here and on board four well they may not even win the match I mean if they lose these two boards and here definitely it looks that uh, white has excellent winning chances as the pawns are marching okay rook b5 a5 b4 rook b6 and so on the pawns are going forward and black cannot really create any past pawns yeah this one is blocked and this one is not going anywhere wow so italy may not even win the match and that's that would be a big disaster for him because they will be then maybe left out of the medals depending of how Iceland is doing yeah so just a quick check wow Kevin thank you for the good news Everton won again wow that certainly makes me happy cheers to that excellent yeah, the Italians, well, they are risking not winning their match. And in that case, if they don't, if they draw, if they draw, in that case, let me just check the standings. If Italy draws, then they will be equal with uh, England. And they may still win a medal if Iceland doesn't win. And then, but it just be, will be decided whether <clears throat> uh, on tiebreak as for Italy not winning that guarantees USA first place so still some interesting games ongoing so let's check Iceland ah in fact Olofsson saved the game so it's a draw so what happened there so we saw this position somewhere here I think when mm, white won the exchange, g6, bishop d7, king d7, queen e3. 
I'm going after that pawn on c5. King c7. I'm giving up the pawn. Maybe it could not have been saved anyway. As knight c5, knight f5 or something allows queen e8. Yeah. So king c7, knight c5. Difficult to not to win this because it looks kind of really crushing. Knight f5. Knight b7. King b7. Queen e8. Queen c7. And now rook d1, which is indicated as a blunder by the engine. And what was winning was d6. Well, not an easy move to come up with. So rook d1, bishop g7, and now black seems to be safe because... He activated all his pieces, these pawns are not going anywhere, and uh, black is safe. Ah, really a missed chance. Really a missed chance for England to, to actually not lose the match. I don't, let's see how the match is going elsewhere. I mean, the, the games. Rook e8 was played, bishop d4, bishop c5. Okay, blockade established, so now it was just a draw. Okay. The draw on board 2 was sort of expected. We had that position after bishop f1, I think, yeah? No, actually it was earlier. So the queen was on... Yeah, this was the position, bishop f1. So queen b4, exchange, and then just a draw. Yeah, it's nothing can really be done. Okay, so draw. So on board 4, Thoralson already beat Stebbings, and on board 3, it's again a draw, so... Well, uh, pity for the English, but good luck for the Icelanders. They will win the match. So, uh, both, they, this is a draw, they will win minimally two and a half, one and a half. And, uh, and then it will be a tiebreaker between Iceland and England 1. Yeah. Uh, if the match points are mm. well I mean a lot of depend will depend what Italy does okay because USA won they are on 15 Iceland and England won are on 14 and Italy is on 13 and they're still playing so if they draw they also have 14 and it will be a three way tie for second place and then one team will be out uh, based on on, uh, on tie breaks so it will be pretty nail biting until the end here, yeah. Pretty nail biting until the end. So uh, let's check the S65 section if we have some conclusions there. Uh, so Knack won as expected. He had a really dominating position somewhere here, yeah. So he just Queen F3 and everything falls apart yeah either d5 or h5 that was expected maester on board two well things have happened obviously what's going on here white is a pawn up we can count so but what is important actually is that the other two games were drawn kalincha drew this position that we saw here yeah g5 and then just advancing and this was the line I saw yeah also calculating it uh, so um, and it was a draw on board four as well the King's Indian where we were somewhere here yeah so f4 was played wow this is sharp he takes a four knight f4 knight f4 gh king h7 rook f4 cd5 cd5 bishop b5 knight f3 knight d7 h5 this looks promising for white knight e5 and now hg6 not being a good move okay maybe fg6 knight e5 queen e5 rook f8 yeah now black is fine yeah Black is fine and draw was agreed. Okay, white had chances but missed them. And what is important that Germany at least draws the match as they secure two points and they secure gold. England also winning already 3 1 up. 
on board three. This was supposed to be a bunker style and a draw. For some reason, somebody broke through somewhere. Probably here, a five was played. Uh, sorry, b five was played. Not sure why it's just not a five and just shake hands. Yeah. So maybe Chapman wanted to play for more cb6, but and missing bishop d4. Okay, so he'll probably regret not just shaking hands with a draw. Doesn't really affect the standings as um, England are winning their match and securing silver. So congratulations both to Germany Lasker and England won. Uh, uh, Lyoki, I mean, Vtachnik Lyok is still ongoing. Surprisingly, White somehow lost the extra pawn. And now Black definitely has drawing chances, even though his king is still weak, but this is ongoing. Rose beat Plachetka as expected. This was winning. Where were we just? I don't remember. Ah, yeah, the dominating knight. Yeah, yeah, this was the position. So it was. Yeah, so even here. Black resigned. Lunch and Budve um, looks drawish. And Gifar drew Petran. So maybe Slovakia may not even win the match. They're actually playing for for a draw, but it's not a given as neither Lunch or Vtachnik are winning at all. Vtachnik We'll probably try to squeeze it but may, they may even lose the match and in that case I'm not sure they guaranteed third place let me just check so well I mean they are two points ahead actually they're losing the direct duel to France so France will uh, get uh, equal third then uh, with uh, on 12 and everything will be decided on tiebreak so Slovakia is risking ending up without a medal here well so let's go back to the S50 section uh, this was done okay so we're basically following the match of the Italians Godena already won I suspect because the Clock time still running, but I don't know why because it looks like it's done. Ortega still playing, though a lot of pawns down here for White. Three pawns down. Okay, and Nikac against Borgo. Borgo still thinking. Six minutes left only for the end of the game, and not an enviable position at all so basically Italians are 2-0 up but they are losing on the remaining boards so really really uh, tough situation for them so, well. well I don't know if Dishman made the nine title or not or made a normal for whatever reason but and looking at the at the boards, in fact, in it the match in the Italian match actually there is only one play game ongoing, and that's on board four, which means that Ortega lost most likely, yeah, because that game finished. Knight c2 played, threatening knight e1, and just game over, yeah. Knight h3 and mating threats. G, the Japon is pro promoting and so on. Oh, really badly misplayed by Ortega and this is so unfortunate for them so what we see on the live feed is that uh, Borgo still playing against Nikac which means that the score is 2-1 for Italy and they are trying to save a draw here if they do well they will share first they don't they share and they share what do they share if they lose the match if they lose the match they are actually fourth clear fourth and out of 
metals. Such a dramatic, a dramatic match. A dramatic match, but sometimes it happens, yeah. That's why chess is sport. No matter what some other people say here. Yeah? Let's see if Iceland match is finished. Okay, this seems to be ongoing, but uh, it should be just a draw. And uh, yeah, doesn't really matter here. Yeah? So we are basically checking only the game Nikach against Borgo. See what's going on here. Black thinking, but he won't be able to think for long because he has less than four minutes to finish the game, so he must start making some moves. Oh, 36 minutes for white, that's a lot of time. And that may prolong the game if white starts thinking himself. So, well, we see what's going on here, yeah? Okay, while we're waiting, actually, we can check what the English women are doing. Just to continue with, we were discussing with Natasha. Okay, this is just a draw already. Susan Lalic against Paronen Petteri. Uh, so what happened was King f6, King e8, a4, a5, took on h4, took on g6, and now just the pawn. And this King d8, and the King is approaching. And that's pretty much it. So that's a draw. Sheila Jackson is lost against Mottonen. So everything in hangs on the game. But actually she she exchanged queens. Wow. So after h5 she did play queen f3 as I, as I expected. And after the exchange of queens, the knight end game should be winning. Again, reminiscing about Botvinnik. Who famously said knight endgames are like pawn endgames. I was always never really understood that one by the great patriarch. Uh, it's not exactly true because in the pawn endgame this pawn would just promote. Here it doesn't it won't promote because there's a knight blockading it. So um, but it still should be winning because generally the, the, the same concept of an outside past pawn should win in a knight endgame as in opponent game. So g6 was played and now white decided to bring the king over. Takes takes f4, king g2, then coming over, king d5, knight e7, knight g6. Remains tricky, but should be winning. The idea I suppose is if king d5, then knight h4 and uh, this pawn is hanging, but then black can just go knight d6 here. Yeah? Uh, remains tricky. It remains tricky. It will definitely take some time. Should be winning, but not straightforwardly. It will take some maneuvering. So actually the English women may as well pull it off. Okay, let's go back. Let's see what Borgo came up with. He gave check, king d5, and now it's his turn again. Yeah, they are self-propelled unless there is a pawn, uh, there is a rook on a2. Uh, that takes it, makes it more difficult to push the pawns. So e4, so he tries to use his passed pawn to distract mm, white. Now a technical move for white would be to give check and force the king back to the 8th rank and then see what to do yeah then it's just maybe a matter of just pushing the pawn to a7 and playing check and winning so looks rather easy I would say the game's still ongoing 15 minutes in the future but uh,
we'll see. Yeah, should be. I mean, it is objectively winning, but White needs to play it out. White needs to play it out. So, a decisive game, and as we said, if uh, Nikac wins, then Italy, surprisingly, who were sharing first before this round, will be left without a medal. They will be fourth, clear fourth. And it would be uh, what then will be uh, uh, to be decided was who gets silver, who gets bronze, Iceland or England. While USA will win gold as they already won their match and Italy will unlikely, they are very unlikely to win their match. I mean, in fact, a miraculous draw here will win the match for Italy, but uh, it's really a miraculous, miraculous result. Okay, White is thinking. So okay, now I'm looking at the standings and I'm just checking. England women 50, they are on seven points, and if they win the match, they'll be on nine, just as, as China Shenzhen women 50. So both teams will have nine points, and the first tiebreaker seems to be, like I said, match points. And the Chinese women have 17, and the English women have 15. So by winning two and a half, which is the minimal win, they will have. 17 and a half with the Chinese women having lost 4 0. And that means that by half a point they will overtake them. So, uh, interesting uh, I mean, possibilities here at the end. Uh, nothing is certain. Yeah, everybody can overtake everybody. So, let's see if the game is still ongoing on the live feed yes it still seems to be going and uh, and the rest of the games have finished actually as I can see from the playing hall it seems that everybody have has finished uh, for sure uh, England have finished and likely Iceland though maybe the, the, the game on board 3 Arnason may be continuing from what I can see but that doesn't really affect the match because it well Arnason is trying to do something with that bishop but it should be a draw and Iceland wins the match anyway so but what maybe what they're trying to do actually is to let's just check what maybe the, what they are trying to do is that by winning their game they win one half a point more of, um, of board points and that may be critical for the for the medals so England won 4-0 and uh, as things stand uh, they will be on 24.5 board points and Iceland are 21 point, 21 and a half and if they only win by uh, by two and a half, they will be on twenty-four. So by half a point, they will miss they will miss the uh, the medal. So maybe that's why they're still this game is still ongoing and Black still trying to win. And let's see if he has chances. Uh, so he created a protected past pawn, and now he's trying to force some sort of Tsuktsuang because if king d4 then just any move the knight cannot move because it's tied down to the defense of the b3 pawn so uh, but okay the, the point is that maybe it's just a 
a fortress and, and like a, you know, a corresponding square in pawn endgames, yeah? So white just moves the king, let's say to e2, and the moment black steps on c5 or d5, white should be able to play king e3. And, but it, it gets complicated by the fact that when the king is on d5, the bishop no longer attacks the pawn, so white can also move the knight. So the tsuk should be king on c5 and white to move. So that is the position that white must avoid, because then he must move the king and then king comes to d4. But even that may not be winning. Okay, knight e2 check, king goes back, the knight goes back. Maybe there is no need for a Tsuk Either way, black is con gonna continue to try. It seems to me this is the only reason why the game is ongoing, because, uh, because of these uh, board points. We will see. Yeah? Let's go back to Nikaj Borgo. Nikaj still thinking, probably. We'll think for a while, but I don't know why, because, like I said, rook b7 is a move that like, a, tech, a technical player will play immediately. It worsens the position of the black king, and uh, white loses nothing by uh, playing it. doesn't lose any extra options, because, I mean, rook f6 is not really an option, because the rook is not doing anything on, on g8 after king g7, even h6 or h5 is a threat. And rook e6 is not possible because of rook d2 loses the rook. So that check on b7 should be played automatically. But okay. That's just my point of view. So we are... Okay, let's maybe check the fight for gold by the English women team. We are actually looking at this game. Okay, white even won a second pawn, and this definitely is winning now. Definitely winning. So that means that okay, Jackson is just losing, and this was a draw, or it is a draw. And yeah, well, that will be an amazing feat for the English women winning gold medal and becoming world champions. Okay, they'll be happy for sure. Let's go back, Nikac Borgo, King d4 plate. Well, like I said, rook b7 and then king d4. Yeah, why, why not cut off the king? even further I mean and that helps in the in the future because with the king cut off on the eighth rank it only it's only necessary to bring the pawn to his a7 because then the pawn promotes thanks to the check and a8 so in that case white doesn't even need the b pawn maybe it, it will be needed for support of the a pawn to advance if black goes rook a2 but uh, that's I mean Of lesser importance yeah what is important that that check must have been played perhaps it doesn't spoil anything but you know when, when you're converting an advantage you should maximize your chances by improving your position as much as possible and uh, deteriorating your opponent's position as much as possible so that would have been done by rugby 7 so e3 played let's check the live feed Uh, yeah, well, thank you, fragrance enthusiast. I appreciate it. Yeah, I enjoyed the the comments and the uh, and the uh, well, your comments and my. Okay, I managed to reply most of the times. I hope. Hopefully, it was insightful, useful, perhaps even entertaining to some extent, so, yeah. So, rook g2 played. 
now it's becoming a race as uh, white will take on e3 black will take on g5 which should be won by white simply because his pawns are are more advanced how it would have helped to have that king there on g8 yeah but okay white has only himself to blame for not playing the move yeah. probably he can play the move even now probably yeah but it's just more complicated because then he needs to calculate what happens after king e6 so it was so much better to do it earlier okay some some faint hope for the italians then yeah faint hope okay so let's check arnason yeah so white is basically just waiting bishop c8 played yeah black will shuffle but won't king e3 obviously yeah Black will shuffle trying to, to, to trick white somehow into some sort of Tsuk Twang or if possible though shouldn't be possible but if white makes a mistake then it can be. Let's see. Rook g2, white is thinking now. So the idea is whether to go for the race or to defend the pawn. Defending the pawn, that's probably safer than going for the race. But would not have, wouldn't it have been so much better had this king been on g8 in the same position? Now the king can come to e6 and come closer maybe, complicating matters for white. Obviously, first e2 will be played. Uh, black doesn't want to lose that pawn for nothing. And the closer the pawn to the promotion square is, the more it ties down the king. Yeah, rook f6, I considered that, and rook e6. But after rook... Yeah, well... Me, yeah, I guess, yeah. But... Uh, both were winning. Definitely what white did was not best, just uh, um, playing king d4. That definitely wasn't good. Yeah. Forza ragazzi, but ragazzi non andano bene, eh? So e2. King d2. Now the a pawn wants to start marching, so how can black... Black will likely need to bring the king, because just moving the rook drops the two pawn. So probably the king will come closer. So really, not so great for Borgo playing on his last seconds here, as everything depends on this game. But, well, what to do? Not, not really uh, much of a choice. It's what King e6 played. But can white just start pushing? a5, King d6, a6, and a7. At some point, black will have to abandon the, the e pawn. So rook g1 king e2 and get somehow behind the pawn if white starts pushing well they're still playing still playing
Possibly that's why it's getting nervous. Okay, a5 played. I mean, Montenegro is not playing for, for anything. Yeah, just prestige, I suppose, because a drawn match for them, 10 points, well, nothing really spectacular in terms of results. But they are playing uh, spoilers here. Yeah, trying to spoil it all for Italy. King d6. Yeah, and probably now if a6, rook g1, but then... Yeah, if a6, rook, king, uh, king, rook g1, yeah? King e2, rook a1, and white will lose the a6 pawn with rook, rook b6, something like that. Maybe we'll not lose the pawn, yeah? King c7, just move somewhere. But then the B pawn can be attacked. Getting tricky, yeah. King D six. Yeah, so probably A six shouldn't be played. B four is safe. But it's no longer autom automatic as it should have been for White. I mean, you know, once you miss a win, the game goes on. Uh, you know. Uh, in a, in a winning position, you should try to win as soon as, as fast as possible. In a losing position, you should try to postpone resigning or just completely uh, outright lost positions as long as possible. Because the longer the game goes, the, the higher the chances of your opponent messing up. And this is Black's chance here, psychologically at least, because objectively he still lost though. Um, psychologically, the longer the game goes, the higher chances of white messing up, provided that black takes that chance with 40 seconds left. Okay, they f did they finish? No, they maybe just... Uh, maybe they just uh, took new score sheets. Which language is the hardest to learn? Well... For me, I guess German because I never learned it. So, <laughs> I guess. I mean, I was honestly I was never interested in learning German for some reason. Maybe I was just uh, traumatized at university when I had to study Old English. And uh, okay, before play by White, best move probably. I uh, I was told that this Old English is like very like German, you know, logical and you know, conjugations, cases and stuff like that. And when I started learning it, I just abhorred it. Couldn't stand the sight of it. And uh, I knew from the start when I enrolled the university and I was looking at the syllabus I was getting. So I realized in third year at university, I was getting this old English stuff and I said, okay, once I pass this exam, I'm graduated, even though that was only in third year. And that's how it happened. I passed that exam somehow and after that it was just smooth sailing everything so yeah which language is hardest old english that's my answer old english middle english or shakespearean english was actually quite easy and no special knowledge for it because uh, i mean you just start reading shakespeare in, in original and you understand it yeah okay there are some words and maybe some expressions that you need to know about but you read and you you, you understand everything so it, that was easy Old English. Uh. Uh, yeah, keeping creating chances, but that's that's what sometimes happens if the opponent defends well, not like Everton, no. So if they defend well, your chances may not be sufficient. So what to do? So the king went to b7 and now these pawns won't promote automatically so uh, yeah well not going in there okay b5 played now the idea is to put the to give check along the seventh rank and then advance the pawns for one rank further though well, it needs to be careful because it, like i said at some point black will abandon the pawn maybe even giving check and then moving, shifting the rook somewhere, and then white will be playing without a without a king. So it's getting complicated. Yeah. Okay, e1 now was played. Okay. 
So what will take? Rook will move somewhere. I mean, should be winning because the king will go to c1, b1 and chase away the rook from these files. Uh, so the rook will either be chased away from a or b files or the rook will move somewhere, but then the king will be liberated. So we'll see. Okay, b6. <clears throat> yeah, looks okay. King b1 is coming and then either the rook stays on the second rank but then rook c7 will promote okay king a6 but that's i mean uh, can white play rook c7 here no because rook a5 doesn't do anything so yeah the king should probably just go to b1 King goes to b1, then if the rook stays on the second rank, then uh, rook c7 should win, and if the king the rook stays on somewhere in the fl, the king moves upwards. And then once the king is free, just goes to c7 and something like this, or just goes to g7, collects everything here. Yeah? So it shouldn't be too complicated now. Yeah, rook b5 is possible, but the king will just go back, and then still the king needs to come to b1, yeah? At least what it looks to me. All rook endings, endings are drawn except the ones that are not. Usually that second part of the phrase is is not mentioned that often. So uh, always remember the second part of the phrase when you say all rook end games are won. Now drawn, sorry. It's okay, the king is coming to be one. Strange that they are still playing 15 minutes from now. Well, okay, let's check the Iceland. Did they manage to do something? Well, not really. White is just shuffling. Okay, let's check the English women. Oh, they won. Wow, that's it. So, Ingrid won and they secured gold for them. So, where were we? And you see, okay, King d5 according to the engine was a mistake. Knight d6 was better, but okay. Knight d7, knight c6, king d5, knight d4, knight d4, knight d5. Okay, yeah, this was the. Yeah, okay. Great. So, congratulations to the. England's women's team for becoming world champions in the S50 category. Well done, really. A lot of things had to happen for this to succeed, but it did. Their men helped by beating 4 0 their competitors, the Chinese women's team, and they won what which they needed to do, and they are world champions. Congratulations. Going back here, King D1, King C1, okay. Yes, yes, all animals are equal, except the ones who are more equal than others, right? So, still playing. Okay, rook a2, king b1, then we'll see where, where black puts the rook. King B1, okay. This all forces black to just play on uh, on seconds because, okay, for some reason the clock disappeared. Oh no, it's here. It forces black to play fast. Not that black has much of a choice, but maybe here it does. Rook A4, Rook H2. I think Rook H2 or just anywhere else on the second rank after Rook C7 is just done. So. 
rook a4, rook a3, but then just king goes king b2, king b3, so... Ah, you mean English women retained the title, so they, they already were world champions before. Wow. Keeping your title is even harder than winning it. So, well done. Aha, rook g2, maybe the idea is... But is there an idea? What about rook c7? And if takes rook a7, and that's b7, and uh, if rook c7, king a5, then b7. So, what's going on? Ah, but maybe there is this trick. So rook c7, king a5, b7, rook g5. But that's just game over. b8, queen, rook b5, it wins the queen, but just drops the pawns. That's it. Uh, why are they still playing? That means that probably white missed... Oh, yeah, he missed rook c7, so rook e5 play. Oh, boy. Kauhi Leonard, no idea what you're talking about, what meta stock. Maybe you're in the wrong channel for this kind of talk, yeah? Yeah, rook c7, it was winning, it was a simple line to calculate, but why didn't do it? Rook e5 was played. He can play it later, I suppose, at any point. Yeah, now rook e7, yeah? Ah, rook e7, and that's it. But... Game still ongoing in 15 minutes, so... That's strange. How does, like, what's the big idea? Like, rook e7, and what does black do? Ah, now there is a difference. That, that, that was the point why the rook was in c7 better, because now rook f8, and there is no rook c8, which should have wrapped things up. Okay. Right, 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 right. right. Okay, yeah, you're right, right. Rook e8 now. With the same idea as b7 then secures b8. But is he going to find it? If he didn't find rook c7, which to my mind was much simpler. Now finding rook e8, I kind of doubt it. The Yeah, both are scared, that's for sure. Uh, but what's at least good for white is he can always come back to rook c5 and rook c7. But if he didn't see it the first time, what are the chances of seeing it now? And if he's meandering, he's, he's panicking can't find the win then well anything can happen even though it's difficult to to suggest what white can do i mean the king cannot do anything he has to stay on b1 to prevent the rook coming from behind the pawns so he must find something with the rook in those pawns and that's kind of elementary mm. kind of that you want to push through and, f and force some force the, uh, the promotion so, I mean, what I'm saying is that white should really look in the direction towards forcing promotion, and that's done by obviously supporting the b-pawn. So, it's uh, like rook e7, putting the rook on 7th rank, 8th rank. It's not so much to calculate. I mean, the idea is clear. You need the rook to support the pawn, and then you just figure out how to do it. Like I said, if you see the line after that rook e7 doesn't work because there is rook f8, then you realize, okay, so I need to have rook c8. Then you go back to the C file and go rook C7 and you wrap the game up. <laughs> yeah, one thing, yeah. Ah, they finished. They finished. I don't know how, but we will have a result here soon. So... Yeah, of course it was easier earlier, yeah. That's, that's the... the, the the punishment of chess, you know, you miss a winning chance uh, earlier, you may get a second one, but it's going to be harder. You may you miss the second one, you may get the third one, but it's going to be even harder. 
you miss the third one, you may get the fourth one even harder. And then you're likely not getting any more. Yeah, of course, rook b7, that was a technical move. Yeah, it's like basic technique. So what did white play? The second I'll switch the game so that I can see the com uh, the I can see the rook e8. Okay, so he found rook e8. Okay, he found rook e8 and likely okay rook f5. Now just give a check. No. Rook f5. Rook e8. King b7, rook a7, king goes b8, then the king is coming upwards, and then black may win this, but uh, should be winning, yeah, king is coming, a6, still takes some time, okay, rook a7, king b8, and then king goes forward. King goes forward, maybe best to the C file, and then a6 and rook moving will can be decisive. Yeah. Even though it can be a bit tricky. I mean a6 maybe rook b5, and then rook b7 checking a8, and then still then king needs to come. Okay, we'll see what white comes up with. Why thinking here when rook a7? Okay, that was played, okay. King b8. Yeah, probably just king c2 or a6, depending what, what uh, white wants to start with. Actually, he can't play a6, there is rook b5 check, sorry, sorry. Can't play a6, just king c2, yeah? King c2 and king coming upwards. That was played. So I find it difficult that white will mess this up and that means that Italy are just end up outside of medals. Really, uh, rook g5, now king c3. Really, it could, I couldn't imagine that this was possible. They were leading, lead, uh, entering the last round. They were hoping maybe for gold and so on. And instead, they failed to win their match and they end up without a medal. What a turnaround. Oh, yeah, absolutely. If this is draw. I'll accept the teasing, I, I agree. I'll accept the teasing, that's for sure. Just don't know how it can end in a draw. It's just very simple, the king is coming, yeah, and then when it's co b5 is covered, then uh, probably some a6 and, uh, and then a6, rook a5, king b4, maybe rook a1, okay. <laughs> Maybe still not that simple, yeah? So actually, the, the plan is to go king b4, defend the pawn, free the rook. And then a6 is a threat. Or if checks are given, king... Uh, b5 king a6 will win so that's the plan fiasco or not it was their own doing and probably the player to blame is well if they are blaming anybody at all Pro probably Ortega who was winning against Miljanic at least a draw would have sealed the deal but losing from winning position that's, that's too huge a turnaround Okay, h5, I guess king b4 now. 
yeah, king b4 played. And now the rook gets liberated and a6 is a threat, so it's probably just we are just a few moves away from resignation. All the games have finished, okay, maybe Iceland, we can check Iceland, if something happened there. Actually, draw, okay, draw. It was a draw, so just, uh, yeah, this was the position. So Iceland winning minimally, which likely will give them a bronze, if my calculations of the, uh, if my calculations of the tie breaks are correct. England will be second. A6 played. England will be second. USA will first, England second, and Iceland third, and Italy fourth. This is likely what we are getting. So a6, now the rook will move and there will be a threat of mate, rook h5, so white, black wants to defend by getting the rook to the 8th rank. That just means that he'll get mated by the pawns, let's say rook g7, rook h8. King b5, a7 check, king a6, and b7 mate. Just in time before black queens and controls b7, yeah? <laughs> yeah, well, sometimes, yeah, you squander some something and you win by a single tempo chess is a tragedy of a single tempo yeah let's see if white executes it I mean nothing else to play though You know, he could have won, I mean, even if everything else remained the same, if he gave that rook b7 check, you know, <laughs> he would not have won by a single tempo, because he's giving mate with the pawn on h2. One tempo more, h1, and it's no longer winning, yeah, because the queen controls b7 and there is no mate. But okay. White still thinking, but there's not much to think about, only where to put the rook, but it doesn't make a difference anywhere. Okay, rook g7 played. Okay, only move rook h8. And then a7, and the king comes to a6. And mate! Okay, should be over pretty soon. Okay, so summing up, well, it was a very exciting event. Yeah, it's even the last round, uh, it didn't go as, okay, king b5 first. I guess that's also possible. The last round didn't, didn't go as, as completely expected because uh, you see, we saw Italy really messing up a com winning match against Montenegro and this cost them a medal. It's a really dramatic finish of the event. Okay, we will stay for a few more moments to see the final in this game and uh, conclude our commentary for the tournament.
K check, King C6, and now probably he'll just go Rook H8 back to try to confuse matters. King A4, wow. Just playing around, eh? Showing some sadism. Funny, eh? <laughs> King A4, Rook H8. Come on. Hey, okay, finally A7. Okay. Only move, go to the corner, then King goes to A6 and B7 mate, so... Well, tragedy for Italy, but they only have themselves to blame, what can I say? I mean, that game, they really should have been... In team events, you don't lose winning positions that can hurt the team big time, and here even the most important, in the most important moment. King A8, King A5, B5, okay. And probably just resign. Nothing much to do. Nothing much to do here for, for black. Well, tragic comedy or, well, for Italians it's definitely tragedy. And maybe for the observers it's a tragic comedy because, well, it was tragic but also, uh, well, what they missed and how things turned around unexpectedly. H3, King A6. And probably just resigns. Well, what to say? 70 moves, big battle, and a win for Predrag Mikac against Giulio Borgo. Dramatic game and dramatic finish to this World Senior Team Championship. What looks like a certain medal for Italy, they were all even playing for first place, now they are fourth and outside of the top three. So, uh, we are concluding our commentary, thanks for staying with us in these nine days, I hope you enjoyed it, I certainly did, and uh, well, thanks for being here. And yeah, I wish you a pleasant evening, congratulations to the winners. Have a pleasant evening and I'll see you in the next event. All the best.